Hey, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? Come in. So is this your second meal of the morning or first? Or? Actually, it's my first. Um, sometimes I wake up a little earlier. Today, now we have two, but I um, actually slept in. You know, I got some good sleep. So, you know. I'm First meal, we'll go get some blades and then we'll go get a post workout meal, which will probably be fun, guys. Got a carton of ice cream or something like that? Yeah, I got that there. That's, that's later today. I got that there ready for me. A typical meal one for you? Um, normally just on a, today it's a, a refeed day, so, um, but normally um, it would just be a cream of rice with bagels, pizza weight, and eggs. And then do that. So my, right now my carbs are ranging, like, well actually to be realistic, I'm gonna start officially my four, four weeks out now. I've been having like 800 grams of carbs. So now this week I'm gonna start fluctuating with like 400, 6, 800, and then still having my cheat on Sunday. So did you condition yourself to eat so much food, or did it just you've always had a big appetite? Or? Uh, I always like I don't I'm not a big foodie. I like junk food. I always since I was, before I got into bodybuilding, I ate a lot of jokes. Pizza, ice cream. So, and the thing was, I was always in a single digit body fat. I was, you know, I used to cut out my hand more. I was just an active kid. And then, um, when I got into bodybuilding, I had to eat food instead of junk. So I would just play handball all day long and, you know, go grab a slice of pizza, you know, be like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and I'll wake up and have, you know, I have a corn stove on my hot dog, go get some ice cream, like I never really ate food unless my mom cooked it. So to me, eating this stuff was like, which I'm not big on eating food, so I had to, that I had to condition myself too so I can put on quality mass. So later on, we do the same thing except the thing we do with potato bread and mushy <laughs> burrito. So what I normally do is I sit here, eat my breakfast, put an MD. Do you know what you want to do? Yeah, just um, answer the fans, you know, like I got a QA, I go in there, check my QA, and I answer the questions what I eat.
I'm still a fan. I might be a bodybuilder, a professional bodybuilder, but I'm still just, I, you know, I'm still a big fan. And it's like, this is kind of the stuff that I watch, like, the, you know, the MOC. And I'm like, oh man, I, I will hope to make it there one day. And I can't believe it. Like right now, I'm like filming for the Battle of Olympia. I'm actually gonna be in the 50th Mr. Olympia. You know, I can't. You know, it's, it's, it's a dream come true. You know, I mean, how many guys? can say that I, I know a lot of guys who I started with and um, when, we, when we started bodybuilding together doing the local shows and nationals and you know this old our dream and I'm here you know believe it or not me John Marco all started together the same show 2007 and we um, were hanging out backstage and ever since then we all were good friends This is my camp. He um, he's actually um, he works on me. What's up, bro? This is all my therapeutic, mostly for my elbow, but whatever is wrong with me, he fixes it. Wants me part of Diesel's team, man. How are you? Good. Good luck, bro. Have a great workout. Thank you. Hold me, all right, man. Soon. All right. Good right. day. All right, buddy. Take care. Hey, what's up guys? Juan Diesel Moreau here. We're here at Beth Francis Powerhouse and we're about to do some legs. And before we do legs, we're about to do a little warm up on the step mill. Got that from Kai Green. Um, get to my joints duplicated and mindset right. So then after that, I'm just ready to go trash these quads. So hope you guys enjoy today's video here at the Mecca, the East Coast Mecca. And um, here to give you guys a fun workout. What's up guys? Here warming up before training legs. Making sure everything's nice and warm. Boom! Now it's time to go train. Warm. Now I'm gonna go take my pre-workout. Pre-shot, it's amazing. Make, gives you this euphoric feeling. After like 10 minutes, you're like, you can keep going and going and going. Sometimes I gotta stop myself from training. I gotta ask enough. Time to go eat. So here we go, we take our pre-shot. And you can see guys, I actually love this stuff because it's way down to the last bit, you know. Take this stuff every day. So, hopefully I got enough here. Yeah, I do. Got a scoop. So get the whole scoop from actually. Well, boom. Take that. In. Drink this now. I also put this. Heat shock is aminos. It's an intro workout. You drink it while you're training. Put this in here for you guys. Has some crystal light. I make some my crystal light with my um, pre-workout and my intro workout. I like mixing up the flavors. It tastes really good. This is running low. Oh, we got more at home, so it's all right. Let me take this. 
and we drink this while we train. Now it's important. So what's our approach today, big dog? We're gonna start with some front squats, and then after that, uh, probably um, some hack squats, either that or some of some leg press. Not sure yet. We'll decide after the front squats. So now what I do really quick is I actually um, stretch it. Squat position. Like 30, 40 seconds. I get up and I do it again and then I start. Warming up and stretching is very good. When you're younger, you get to get away with not doing it, but um, as you get older, you need to incorporate these things or all of a sudden you start getting like little nagging injuries. So you start doing this stuff and you realize that um, your work is always smooth and don't have to worry too much about injuries. Especially when you're gonna go train pretty heavy, you know? Like I was saying before, I'm not a real big food guy. Like I have no, um, you know, my wife will tell you, I, n I never talk about, food. like during the week, even on my, like today, my cheat day, I mean, I'm not like talking about, oh my God, I can't wait, I wanna eat this, I wanna eat that. I mean, my day's fine, I'm, I train, I eat, I, you know, I. Yeah, I like what I eat anyways. It's not really, really um, strict. It has a lot of flavor, a lot of seasoning, and some, a lot of condiments. So, you know, it's, it's not a strict diet, but it's, I don't ever complain about, oh my God, I want to eat this meal. I can't wait to, to, to the off season. I actually rather be in pre-contest than the off season. I eat more food. When I'm off season, I, since I don't have to eat all, the, all that food, I sometimes don't eat as much. Um, just to get my calories and I just eat junk all day. So I can tell you I'm going to be shredded and I'm going to be fuller and bigger than I have been in these other shows this year. And condition, I think I'm going to bring a little bit better conditioning. Super excited. I mean, words cannot express how I feel. I mean, I haven't stopped training since Toronto and no time off. Maybe off the diet, but not the training. And I've just been going hard and so, I've been having so much fun this whole prep. It's ridiculous. I wish I could just, you know, be in prep mode this whole, the whole year long. But, you know, we can't. We gotta go into the off season. And, you know, to grow a little more, but I was able to put on some size from Toronto to here. You know, um, hopefully it's a good enough size to make me a top 10 finish.
Sport. That was fun. I right, catch my breath and we'll go to the next exercise. The <sighs> super set on leg press or leg extensions. So the fun begins now, guys. This is gonna see uh, my style after I do my heavy compound movement. Everything's gonna be really fast, so. Next four sets are going to be back and forth and pretty much no rest in between. Just back and forth, back and forth. So this will probably be the last time I talk for the next 10 to 15 minutes. feel better pre-conscious since I'm a natural ectomorphous. My body feels better being leaner. I train better. I it's just better for me. You know, I'm and all season I you know I'm trying to put on weight so I try to move less. So I work out and I try to just do less around the house or just in general. And um I don't know. But I'd rather be in pre-contest. That's and I really got a crazy pump. such a fast pace in the quads and getting so much blood into the muscle, getting that pump, was I realized, you know, before everything was heavy, 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 a lot of knee pains, a lot of joint, muscles improved, but wasn't improving fast enough. So incorporating this type of, and I started putting months in difference, if you guys noticed this year, had a really nice sweet, something I never had before in my quads. Now they're just getting better and better because putting more volume and training them smarter. Still not lifting, not like I'm lifting really light. You know, still lifting pretty heavy. A training partner. He does chess with me every Thursday. Um, this is good friend George, big supporter and uh, big time supporter. Plus, he's my chops a little bit. Like sometimes now that I'm pre contest, he can get in my last vein a little bit because he'll make like little wise comments that like that's it. You'll see, I have like four plates on each side. That's it. You're not lifting heavy, and I'm like I'm bodybuilder, not a power lifter. But I know he does it to bust my chops. But like pre contest. You know, I'm a little edgy a little time, so. So this next exercise is gonna be, uh, it's called the sending sets. I'm gonna do 10 reps, and I'm gonna keep going until I can't go anymore. All right. So first 
first two exercises kick my butt because to the first squats, so that kills it. And then going into that superset, back and forth so fast, it fatigues my legs so much. So I get all that blood there, it makes them weak. So after that, everything feels so heavy. Come on. Uh, yeah, I could go to a set. Uh, do one more after this. But do one, yeah. This is heaven. I love it. Let me finish this. So we'll do one more like that. Exercise now, this becomes heavier. Sometimes I start with this and I'm able to do 10 plates all together 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So it'll be like 110 reps. Now, as this being pretty much my third exercise, my legs are super pumped, fatigued. So now, getting to the fifth plate, it feels like an overload of weight. Got the best, for well, the best training here, you know, I mean, any given day you walk in here, Kai's here, Victor's here, John is here, Kevin English, and it's, that's not motivation, motivation enough, then I don't know what it is, you know? You know, it's like not coming here and that you're the best, you know what I mean? Or the biggest. When you're in the gym and you're the biggest, it's, you know, everybody's like, hey, you know, you're the man. But here, you know, you got best athletes coming here, whether it's Phil Heath popping up, Jake Cutler, you know, all these guys, everybody comes here. You know, um, you have Flex Lewis here this week, two days ago. Guys looking monstrous. God bless him. It's amazing. So, this is what's 
training for like an hour and a half. If I do hamstrings, we'll be here for like three hours. So <laughs> do this. Get two more meals, three more meals in. Come back and just two hamstrings. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, right now we just finished training quads, um, and we're gonna go to Five Guys get a post-workout meal and um, we feed the body. <laughs> Every day causes a lot of money because I like to eat good, so I don't eat cheap. Like, I like to eat shrimp every day, steak. Like, everything I every meal is different, so I don't just eat chicken. And, you know, I eat one chicken meal, which is my last meal. I have that with oatmeal, but I eat, like, steak. Shrimp is expensive. It's $10 a pound. Conclusion that, yeah, that it is. I'll put the ketchup on that later. So we have the calorie count at 920 for a regular bacon cheeseburger. Not a triple. <laughs> you got oh, extra patty. I got two extra patties in each one. Um, bacon. Uh, I mean, it got the mayo, the cheese, the onions. You're looking at each burger, maybe like at least. I would say each one 1600 at least. And a large fry is 1300 calories without the ketchup. So we're sitting um, pretty comfortably over 50. 50. 5,000 calories. I taste a lot of burgers. I'm, this right here. Eat it all. 5,000 calories to five guys. <laughs> five to five. There you go. Huh? Do that four times a day. That's your, that's your 20,000 calorie. Uh... We'll probably go today. Um, probably go over. I don't know. 20, you think? I've been going over 20 past a few weeks now, yeah. Look at the size of that one. Oh, yeah. Now it's a party. First workout meal, almost done. Burgers are down. Now, finish off the fries. Hey guys, thank you for watching my segment for the Battle of the Olympia. I see you guys at the O. Now it's a party. What's up guys, 2014, Battle for the Olympia. We are right here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. We're getting ready to uh, shoot Big Rami uh, five days out from the Olympia. It's very complicated. 
Yeah, he's still humble, but he is not as, uh, he's not in the best mood right now, so which is understandable. And um, but still, we're gonna kill it. We're gonna do what we have to do, and stay tuned for a little bit more. First day to see the film, of course, it's just a day or two before he starts carving up. It's when you're at your lowest, so I don't really think he cares a lot about this movie right now. You offer him the movie or some food, I'll guarantee you what he goes for. He'll choose the food for sure. Mm -hmm. Come on. Five days left. Five more days. One, two, come on. Three, two, two more. One, two, drop. Let's go. Come on. One, two, three, nine, two more. Drop. Little more. Come on. One, two, three, four, ten. One, two, drop. And run, run with this. Come on. One, two, three, all you can. Good. Still two plates right there. I know you guys expect this big guy to lift five, six, seven plates, which he usually does, but please understand, it's Monday, pre-judging is Friday, this is his last day of uh, depletion. Last thing I want to happen right now is him hurt himself because he's trying to go four or five plates, which he probably still could do, but I would probably kill myself if he would hurt himself. Two, 
three, four, and easy. Still manhandles this work. But like I said, it's whiskey. How's this prep then compared to last year? How's this prep? He came out earlier this year, right? Yes, he came out. Um, been here in uh, 10 weeks. So, are you taping this? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I can take it out if you yeah, yeah, No, no, no. I just want to know. So, you know, yeah. 10 weeks ago, he came out here simply for the fact because we wanted him to uh, just relax and just do what he does and what he gets paid for. And that's to be a bodybuilder. So, he eats, sleeps. My wife cooks all his food. You know, we'll take care of him like his own, like like it's his family. He is, actually. And uh, all he could do is train, eat, do his cardio. We have all the cardio equipment in the house, so there's no traveling to get to the cardio in the morning. And he is much bigger than last year, <laughs> simply for the fact that he started growing while he even started dieting. So, and that is because he was relaxed. You know, all these other years, he wasn't really relaxed. He was used to still doing had to do work, work in the gym and over there in Kuwait, cool had to make him work in the gym for free, eight hours a day and all that kind of shit. But now he wasn't doing all that, so he's a bodybuilder now. You know, he gets paid to bodybuild and that's all he has to do. Bodybuild and be the best he can be. And uh, How much bigger do you think he is this year from last year? Um, it's very hard to say how much bigger he's going to be because uh, you never know what happens with the, well, once we start pulling water, but if I had to roughly guess, I would say ten pounds. Ten pounds. I want to say fifteen, but I'm going to say ten just to be on the safe side. <laughs> but we'll see. It's quality. He gained a lot of quality. His back wasn't as thick as it is this year. His back is much thicker, and, and he just overall flows better. He has a better shape. His, body, his upper body caught up with his quads, so his quads is not overpowering that much anymore. So it's just a better run, you know, a very dangerous run too. So and I can only imagine what's going to happen in the next two, three years. So if he keeps doing what he's doing, he will be the best for sure for a long time. Six, seven, eight. Nine. Good. That's it. And that's actually still light for him. I see him handle six plates like that. So. You still good though. You should be yeah, the first the first push is probably yeah. yeah. Catch your breath. Catch your breath. <laughs> Catch your breath. All right. Come on. Twelve reps. Two, three, four, one, two. Go. One, two, three. Come on, 10, one and two. There you go. Good job. Come on, come on. It's okay. Here you go. Come on. Two, three, 10, one and two. There you go. Good job. 
Small next to him, right? I should never be, I shouldn't even be next to him. I feel like a girl. <laughs> There's not a lot of guys that make me look small. Actually, there was none. But he does make me look tiny, especially sideways. But that's all right, that's all right. It's time to shine. First smile I saw today, in the last two days. Yeah? Good job. One more drop. So when's he going to move out here for good? Well, we got his visa. So he is. Whenever he's ready, he can come move, bring his family. Everybody's approved. We got it done. Thanks to our sponsor, Gap, for making this happen. Romney well, officially has a 01 visa. And um, yeah, so we got, we got a lot of touring going on after the Olympia. We got, of course, the European tour. We got to go to Spain, uh, Dubai, Prague, San Marino, Finland. After that, he's going to go home to see his family after a very long time. He misses his kids, of course. And then uh, he's got to come back here at the end of October. We got some business to take care of for Gat. We have a winner who won the train with me and Rami. So he's going to be flown in by Gat. He is from uh, somewhere in Georgia. Then we have to go to Australia for a tour. For 14 days and then uh, Holland, and then we'll see what happens after that. That's it. That's it for the final chest workout. You saw it was just basically a kind of getting the blood in to the muscle kind of workout, but um, <clears throat> it still was fairly moderate weights. 
Now we have one more day of working out tomorrow, which is Tuesday, then uh, it's time to carb up and uh, time to do the final touch-ups, which means that uh, get them ready for Friday. Friday night, 7 o'clock is uh, judgment time. So pre-judging starts, I know that probably at 7 o'clock the first guy will be on stage. My personal wish would be that he'll get number one and be the first one on stage. But let's see what happens, you know. We're looking forward to it. Thank you guys for watching our segment for Battle for the Olympia 2014. And of course, um, a special thanks to all our sponsors. GAT, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Flex, we couldn't be with a, be a better publication. Um, of course, Gorilla Wear for the awesome clothes and Cyclone Shaker Cups. We appreciate y'all's support and we, we'll definitely make you guys proud, that's for sure. Thank you very much. What's up, bodybuilding sports fans, muscle match enthusiasts, Flex Online, and the family of the sport out there in Cyber World. Kai Green here, your boy, AKA Mr. Getting It Done, and we are here at the Mecca of Bodybuilding, East Coast Mecca, that's none other than Powerhouse Gym. And uh, this is Battle for the Olympia. So, if you're ready, let's train.
looking at that scale, I think I better go do some more cardio. It's a little heavier than you expected, or you that? Well, I mean, my, my clothes are wet now. I blame it on a sweaty hoodie. And the three gallons of water you just drank, right? <laughs> 299 is still praying for a miracle with the Olympia. The immaculate conception. Reception. Something like that. Frank O'Hara. There's just so much that goes into it. Working, working towards um, working on a dream because it uh, the world is what it is. And despite difficult situations and frustrations of the moment, you know, it's still perfect. It's a perfect plan. It's, you know, the trick is to learn how to see what you want to see, even when the evidence of those things aren't visible on the surface. You know? um, you know, different people call it different things. Different faiths will call it. In fact, some people will call it faith. You know, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that not yet seen. But in order to be, in order to be an athlete, determined to be his best, in order to be a, a businessman, determined to produce a desired end result. In order to be a visionary, you have to be able to to demonstrate the work, and the work is an act of faith. It's an act of believing and seeing things before they happen, seeing what's not when it's not yet there. When practical explanation would say, oh no, what are you looking at? What are you talking about? Um, that's what I believe is at the core of this experience that we call bodybuilding. Uh, there's a way to do it as a sport, there's a way to do it as a lifestyle. Um, but they're different, they're separate, they're not the same. You know, the sportsman aspect of it is an entirely different animal. But the person that subscribes to this, these ideas as a lifestyle, you, know, you show me a person that does that, and I'll show you a person that recognizes the power of their belief. I'll show you a person that is a manifesto. I'll show you a person that is a creator. They are, in fact, a visionary. We are visionaries. It's taken me a long time to be able to understand it and even be bold enough to articulate it. But recent events, being able to be in the spotlight as I am, you know, um, compels me to think about what it is that you have to say, what it is that you have to offer in an effort to give people that are paying attention and listening to you. I'm convinced that I'm not in the position that I'm in because I am great, but because been able to make proof positive that 
the laws of the universe that exist are just they're, they're real you know just as real as gravity even, even the ones that we don't understand and we don't know I'm not here because I'm pretty and uh, for damn sure I'm not here because some would say I have the right pedigree but I'm here because there's proof to the power of work I believe that another word for work is belief. There's something to say you believe with your mouth. There's something else to say you believe with your thoughts and your actions. Your thoughts lead your actions. So, um, I'm here as a product of work. We're filming Battle for the Olympia. Not because somebody thought I was a nice guy, but because there was proof to the idea that, hey man, if you're willing to work hard, you're willing to put the work in, you know, to see your, your vision and work towards seeing it created and make it happen, you can do it, you know. But it's not because somebody's going to give it to you, but because you. You constantly have to troubleshoot and figure out and solve and question and answer and you know, that is the work. So if you're willing to do the work, I'm going to quote Branch Warren from the film Generation Iron. He said, I don't make me laugh when I say it. I'm going to say it. You can't make me I gotta get my Branch Warren face together. In this life, ain't nobody gonna give you a damn thing. But if you're willing to work hard, you can have anything. Anything that you want. As long as you're willing to work hard for it. So, I believe that. I think Grant is right. You know, thank you, Mr. Warren, for so articulately, eloquently putting it. But that's that's it right there. And a part of that work is, you know, mastering your tools. The athletes that do this, this that subscribe to this lifestyle and take you know, to the place of doing it as a sport, earn a living doing it being successful at it are people that are, you know, more importantly than genetics, have been able to master some skills. You'll be surprised how far mastery of specific skills can take a person when you really want to get where you're trying to go. Um, so if there's anybody out there that's listening to me right now and, you know, think that I may have something to say that may be of some fruit to you as you are in the process of your own journey, I'm going to tell you this. Throw genetics and talent out the window. Genetics and talent, long before we can ever even have a conversation about that, we need to be able to talk about some very important things. One, desire. Desire starts to define everything. It's, it's, it'll have you be able to put the work in even when your music is in the room, when your training partner doesn't show up. When the diet gets uncomfortable, desire is a tool that will help you overcome objections. It'll help you troubleshoot, think critically in an effort to solve problems and be, and be more concerned with problem solving than the actual problems themselves. I'm willing to bet that the average person that's listening to this right now has never been hooked up to sophisticated biofeedback equipment for the purposes of figuring out what their genetic predispositions are in relationship to muscle growth and how well or not you synthesize protein for the conversion of this or that to create lean body mass. I'm willing to bet the average person that's going to listen to this has not done that. And I'm going to submit this to you if you're willing to accept it. 
then that then tells me that if that represents the average person, then what makes us different isn't genetic predisposition. It's our ability to be able to tap into our desire and use that desire to help us develop other key specific tools and skills that we can use towards attaining the desired end result, whatever it is that we choose to be. In this case, we're talking about bodybuilding. So, so if you're a person that's looking out there saying, oh man, I'd love to do that, but don't you need to have great genetics to do it? Ask Larry Scott. Ask Rich Gaspari. Ask Sean Ray. Ask the reigning Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. Because on a lot of levels, in another conversation, there are people that would suggest that, hey, being clavicularly narrow or having a host of other things should present a problem with being able to identify yourself as the best in the world. But despite those things, the people that I've just mentioned have been able to do it. So that tells me that there's a lot less stock that I want to put in genetic limitations. Before I have that conversation, I want to start to explore what the hell can happen when a mindset, when a man sets his mind on a purpose. And that's why at the root of this experience that we call bodybuilding, we're talking about the ultimate science or system of personal development. It's taken me almost 30 years of my life to get to a place where I really, really, really understand it. But as I move around the gym now and I train and I move iron and so on, I understand that those things are surface. The root of this thing is what I just shared with you. So, if you're willing to accept it, if it's some fruit for you, good. That's what it's meant to be. If not, put it on your shelf. It may mean something to you down the line. And if it doesn't, ever, that's okay too. Um, this has been Battle for the Olympia, Road to the Olympia. I'm very excited to be been a part of this project, largely because I know that there are people out there that are inspired by this and I too have been inspired by some of the material that this project projects like this have been able to to produce so even if you're not looking to get on an Olympia stage within the next 20 years or so whatever your Olympia will be good luck and until next time let's keep it positive and let's keep encouraging each other Good morning, good afternoon, Sean Fletcher, Sean Wilden. I'm here at uh, Mecca, Rose Gym, Venice, California. Ready for the battle for the Olympia? Stay tuned. <laughs> Just uh, Brad Rowe making his pro debut in a couple of weeks. Um, and of course, you guys know Charles Glass. Um, he's been kicking my ass for almost two years now. But it's been fun, it's been real. We gotta put this on YouTube how it's done right here. It won't be perfect.
How are you feeling this year, Big Sean? Uh, How's your training going? It's one of the best um, prep I've had. Is it? Um, right now I'm about 260. <laughs> about 238 in stage last year, so. Where do you think you've seen your uh, most noticeable uh, improvement? Everything. Really? Figure out the only way I could, um, the only way I could go out there and be a factor is just working on everything. Same for one thing, they're like, well, you need to bring this up. So, I think this year we were like, you know what, fuck it, let's just, we're just kill it. Everything grows equally and see what happens. I got up to 290 in the off season, which is good. I can teach myself how to walk again. <laughs>
Somebody might get their feeling hurt, it might be me. <laughs> What's going to be going through your mind when you walk on stage this year? <laughs> Come on, tell me what's going on in your head. There's a lot going on. I don't know. There's a constant battle right now. Arnold. A lot. <laughs> you know, they said I was, I'm too old and fat, I'm out of shape and... I'm not a threat, so that's been stuck in my mind for a couple of years. But, uh, Figaro and I are one of the best team. And even though this sport is very selfish, it's the opportunity to surround myself with you know, the great minds like Charles Glass, Chris Aceto, and my training partner like Brad Rowe that's consistent. You know, great sponsors. You know, VPX Sports, Flex Magazine, Six Pack, Chic. So, yeah, I feel blessed right now. And it's just a matter of going out there and putting everything together and see where the dice falls. <laughs> I could only beat my best and then see what the judges say. And you feel right now, at, at what, 10 days out, you're better than what you were last year? And this is the best I've ever looked, in my opinion. I, mean, I was like 238 in the stage last year at Olympia. In the morning when I wake up, I'm about 260. Because my condition is a lot better than it was last year, so. We'll see what they're saying, man. I might be too big this year. <laughs> my waist is still small, I look like I'm pregnant.
this year has been good. It's been a good, it's been a good um, Anything different from last year or outside of putting on 15 or 20 pounds, it looks like? You know what it was, man? And, um, after the Arnold, I was. I wasn't pissed, I was motivated. You know, because. You know, congratulations to Dennis, but. Conditioning shape wise, I just felt as if. You know. There's no way you could have beat me. And, I mean, looking back at the pictures, I was like. So he's taller. And he weighs a few pounds heavier. You know, but it just motivated me after that to just say, you know what? Instead of just trying to improve on one body part, just just go in the gym and just grow and you know, just try to maintain aesthetic, keep my stomach the way it is and so forth. And I broke my foot in April and I, I just kept training. <laughs> uh, I was like, I wasn't gonna let that stop me. Even though I couldn't do a lot of stuff, I was like, the stuff that I was able to do, I'm, I'm just gonna beat the shit out of that body part for that. You know, when I stopped at my prep, I just went all out. Uh, I figured there was nothing to stop me, and you know, I told Chris and Silver, Sita, I told our Charles class, uh, Chris Lewis here, I was like, and then Brad, I was like, I don't give a shit if I need to be real out in the wheelchair at the Olympia. <laughs> One way or another, this is going to be my best package I ever do. And, um, it's been great. <laughs> What's your plans after the Olympia? Uh, after the Olympia, I have Spain, Dubai, Prague, Italy, Finland, a couple of guest posing. And, uh, just going to take it from there and see what happens. I'm going to do the Arnold in uh, Australia, but I think the focus now is just finishing the year strong and you know, make some noise. In my opinion, I feel as if the door is open for anyone. I know uh, I feel as Mr. Olympia, but I feel can be beat. The yes falls like anybody else. And um, it's just a matter of someone bringing the right packages and be judged accordingly. <laughs> you know, because at the end of the day, we all got to remember it doesn't matter. The best physique doesn't always win. And uh, at the end of the day, we work our ass off and then we're judged by someone else. And that we have no control over. But, you know, as long as you know that, hey, you know, you're, uh, you know, did the best you could and outdid yourself from the last show, uh, then you just leave it up to their opinion, then if it doesn't work out that way, you just say thank you. <laughs> thank you, wave, smile, and say on to the next show. Uh, I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Flex Magazine, AMI, uh, VPX Sport, Chic, Six Pack, Jaguar. Uh, thank all my wonderful fans for continuing to walk with me on this journey. Uh, you guys have been awesome. Uh, my training partner, Brad Rowe, Trainers, uh, Psycho Fitness, uh, Chris Lewis, Mr. Yoda himself, Mr. Charles Glass, and of course, the Mad Technician, the one and only Mr. Chris Aceto. Um, I'm truly blessed to be surrounded by great minds. Uh, people that understand the journey that I'm on. Uh, they just continue to support us. And of course, like to thank Bruce. You've been awesome. Thanks for next showing up in a Jay Cutler shirt this year. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> I know I'm going home now, so I'm like, yes. <laughs> uh, but definitely thank you guys so much. You guys have been awesome. And uh, thank you for tuning into another year of uh, Battle of the Olympia, uh, 40 Olympia. Uh, I'm trying to get it right this year. Um, and hope to see you guys next year. Um, hopefully only that sand out. Uh, stay tuned. The best is yet to come. Peace.
Hi guys, I'm here with William Bonner. We're uh, just four days away from this year's 2014 Mr. Olympia in Las Vegas. This is actually the 50th time that the Mr. Olympia has taken place in history. And William is going to be uh, a new athlete stepping on stage in just four days' time. How are you feeling, buddy? Excited to be here. Good, good. I mean, as you know, that Williams had a, you know, a pretty impressive start this year, 2014, coming off a second place in Australia, um, and obviously then a number of months later, he took a first place, his first pro victory, in Sacramento, and then a very strong second place in Tampa uh, the week later. But anyway, moving forward, we're four days out. Um, Williams on very, very low carbs at the moment. Um, you wouldn't think that looking at his muscle Good bodies. <laughs> uh, this guy's got like you know, just a very, very three-dimensional thick physique. There's no weaknesses in his physique. He's a very, very strong three-dimensional athlete. So I'm really excited. This will be the first time I've actually seen him stripped off since we sort of left each other in uh, Tampa, which was probably four or five weeks ago. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he looks like. Of course, I get pictures on a daily basis with William, uh, but actually seeing it in their eyes with the flesh is something different. Do you want to speak? Yes, we're going to do yep. a little bit flush, you know, like uh, every part of the body except the legs. We're going to do a few exercises and uh, just a little bit pumping to get the blood pumping you know, also. Uh, not, not heavy. It's yeah, more just a sort of a glycogen uh, depletion workout, so we won't be going to failure, we won't be just going crazy, we won't be lifting heavy weights. More so, just as like William said, just to get some blood around the body and uh, just basically utilizing any last bits of glycogen and taking away from the body before we start the drying out and carb loading phase, which will probably take place either tomorrow or Thursday. Well, actually, will take tomorrow, take place tomorrow because pre judging is this Friday, obviously, finals is on Saturday. Peak week, there's a lot of people who want to know, you know, what athletes do really for the last number of days going into the show as far as training. The reality of it is this, is if uh, you're not ready a week out from the show, you're never going to be ready for, for the show. And if you think about it, your body is not just in a um, calorie deficit, or your glycogen levels are low. Obviously, you're, re you're sort of relying on the reserves of body fat to basically get you through your workout. So, there's no reason why your intensity for the last number of days should be really high. It's just more than it, more importantly, getting blood into the area, getting rid of any last bits of glycogen before you start a carb loading phase, if you are going to start a carb loading phase. As far as loading is concerned, you know, that's another thing because it really depends on the athletes. William's one of these athletes where his muscle bellies are so round, he doesn't need a crazy amount of carbs to actually fill them back out. Um, as you can see, there's still a lot of separation taking place at the moment, even though he's very much in a complete state.
work ethic is really high. Um, he's not hard, you know. He's not certainly not scared of hard work, and um, he's a very driven individual. I think not just because he wants to be a successful athlete, but I think it's because he wants to be successful so he can provide a better future, hopefully for his family. Um, and that's one thing that um, I like about William. He's very much a family man. Um, so he doesn't get caught up just purely with the sport alone, which I think some people, you know, they find it very difficult to sort of execute being a family man and also being a professional athlete, for instance. Um, as far as where he's going, um, I think William is definitely one of those athletes who is one of the new breeds in the industry. I think that he's one of those exciting athletes where everybody knows that he's got a very bright future. So it's just about being smart, making sure you don't pick up any injuries, make sure he's just very consistent. Um, but he's very, very driven, and um, my job is easy because really, you know, I get my pictures every day. Um, I'll change his diet every day if it needs to be changed uh, according to the, what he's looking like, what he's feeling like. Uh, but this this show has been really well. So it, the prep has been really good. The negative about this year is that uh, it's been a long season for him. He's done multiple shows from the very beginning of the year, and obviously we're now in September, and we've also got four or five shows we're going to be doing post-Olympia, so it's going to be a long, long season for him. But I think that it's something that he's needed to do to basically get his face and his name out there, uh, because there's obviously a lot of uh, fans out there in the industry who want to see who actually William Bonac is, and they don't get the chance to see that or see him unless they actually see him on the, on the stage. So. How you feeling, buddy? <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm really just excited. Can't wait to Friday. Not only with all the pros, but most of them used to be my idol before, so it's an honor to be there, man. Good. Are you glad you made that move into the open class versus yeah. the two twelves? Yeah. I mean, obviously you've done very well, but. Um, I always, always wanted to do the whole pink class, you know, but in the beginning it was not a smart move, you know, so... You know, I'm glad we made that move. <laughs> Thank you.
Good. So is it on my arms? On the arms? Yeah. Um, just. Go to the table crossover.
Okay guys, that's a wrap here with William Bonnick and myself. We're here in Las Vegas, as I said, four days out from the Olympia. Uh, William has just finished a upper body flush, um, a little bit more than just a upper body flush. He really sort of uh, depleted glycogen storage. Um, we're excited about this year's show for many, many reasons. and know that you guys are definitely going to be happy with what you see on stage in four days' time. What have you got to say, buddy? Yes, uh, first of all, I want to thank my family, friends, everybody who supported me, Pepe. Uh, I want to thank USN and GESP and uh, I want to thank Carl Holland for supporting me and standing behind me and uh, thanks my coach Neil Hill also and uh, everybody from Y3T, thanks, keep, uh, keep supporting us. Cheers guys, really appreciate your support guys and as I said we'll make sure that we really deliver the goods now in four days time so you guys won't be disappointed at all. Hey guys, this is Dennis Wolf. Welcome to uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, LVAC at the Sahara. Thanks a lot to the uh, managers for letting us uh, film here. Uh, we are five days out of Mr. Olympia 2014. Um, it's gonna be, uh, the next four days gonna be just the last workouts. So uh, it's not the usual workout what I always do. It's a little bit different, just, uh, you know, maybe uh, we're gonna use lighter weights or uh, do some, you know, some different sets, some uh, maybe a couple more sets, uh, maybe drop sets. Uh, I don't know how I feel, and uh, just just going with, uh, you know, through my feelings and uh, how my body uh, reject, you know. Uh, yeah, we're gonna hit chest today. We start in calves, uh, couple sets, just a warm up. You know, the last the last week is always different, so we do. Um, we, we try to squeeze whole week in, in three days, so workout. So, all right. Um, I'm around 280 pounds. Five days out, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, it's gonna be, uh, I think, a very very interesting weekend this uh, this uh, Olympia, and uh, I think uh, it's gonna be a war. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for watching us, and uh, thanks for following us, and uh, thanks for buying Better for Olympia. All right, take care. So this is about the biggest you've been this close to the show, huh? A 280. That's pretty good. Well, really heavy. But better condition than last year. Mm -hmm. So far. <laughs> last days is always crazy. You've seemed to have nailed it for the last couple of years in a row on your own, which is which is nice. Yeah, I think uh, I found a way, you know, I figured out what, what my body needs. And not just, you know, it, it's, even this year it's a little different. See, every year is a little change. So you find, finding it's getting, like, as you get older, it maybe gets a little easier? Because Jay said that a couple years ago. He's like, as you get it's older, it's not like, easy. It's just you, you don't need so much uh, food anymore. You know, you don't need so much starch. Hmm. I think it's when, when your body is young, you burn everything, you, you can eat whatever you want, <laughs> you just burn it.
They're all trying to be heavy. Being heavy in the preparation is not, you know, not a big deal. You know, but being heavy on stage and being at least the same, you know, having the same conditions last time, you know, this is this achievement. <laughs> you know, I, I can be uh, in two days to 90 if I want it, but still, you know, not dry as I want it. But that's the problem. What were you weighing last year on stage? Uh, on stage? I was around 270 something, 69, 271, yeah, something like this. We'll see, I mean, it's only counts on Friday and Saturday. The rest is, it can be like looking like Gordon Yates or Ronnie Coleman before or after, but not at the day. No injuries or anything this year? You feeling good? Everything's no good? Injuries, no injuries, Awesome. Everything okay so far. <laughs>
Already so much bum. What do you think about the lineup this year? Yeah. Any any standout stuff? Um, same as last year? It's probably the same as last year, but uh, you know, it's a year later. The guys are not sleeping. So. Yeah, it seems like when everyone's talking about the top, they only mention you three. You know, Phil. Kai, yeah, I mean, Kai and you. I mean, that's that's the top uh, from last year, and then from Arnold. That's that's what uh, you know. What the people saw is the last, you know. The other guys, they, they uh, of course, they need to prove it as well. But anybody can make it. So, who do you think the biggest like dark horse, the sleeper out of the out of the line, like maybe top ten, that's going to surprise people this year? Anybody? What What do you mean surprise? Like um, move up a lot. Like would it be Rami? Would it be Roly? Would it be? I mean, you guys are pretty established at the top. It's gonna be yeah. really hard to knock you guys down, but I think that that fourth through seventh place could shift around a lot depending on who shows up. You know, I think the top four is gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. And after that, yeah, okay, then it will be from fifth to seventh. It's it's Dexter, it's uh, uh, Rami, it's Rolly, and who else? Victor. So that's that's gonna be from fifth to ninth, I think, to eight. Yeah. Okay. But which which way? I mean, I don't know. Roly Roly looks great by himself. Amazing. I mean, everything is just ridiculous. But look at the lineup. We all know when you start standing. That's people. you know. I I don't look by myself. You know, like I'm the the biggest bodybuilder. But look at me on stage. That that's what it's all about. You know, it's bodybuilding. It's uh, creating uh, illusion on stage, not in the gym. You know, because you're preparing for this day, you know, just be only there or just two days at the Olympia, but the Friday is the day, you know, and uh, um, Rami is big. I think he needs a couple more years, then of course, then we'll see, because uh, to, to have mass, you know, we, we knew a lot of guys with mass, Kovac and uh, John Pierre Fox, all these guys, they all uh, had a lot of mass, but to have, to have this quality and these cuts and these striations and uh, everything what, what fits together in the balance and symmetry, then we can move up to the top five, four, whatever, you know. It's not easy, so we'll see. It's, of course, uh, he's gonna be much improved, I guess, uh, and then the other guys too, but it's not easy.
Like I said, top five is you can mix it. Even even like with, with Mr. O. I mean, last year you could call, do like the, the top three, put them either way. Nobody would say something because but, uh, everyone was, was great. But uh, Mr. Winter is Mr. Winter. He got this, this bonus, you know. So ah, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I'm worried about me. Let's see. How much did you weigh when you first started working out? First started bodybuilding? 72 kilos. It's uh, 160. And how old were you? Wait. <laughs> 19, 18, 19. Yeah. You notice know, a, you know, a pretty fast response? Did you grow pretty quick? Yeah, after two years, I was competing. With, uh, what is it, 94, 93 kilos? It's, 190, <laughs> two years later, you know. It was pretty, pretty fast. I gained like 20 pounds in the first year. Wow. Lean. I ate just milk products. That's it. You know, milk products in Germany are safer than here, you know. They, they are real, you know, not, not pasteurized or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah I, don't, I don't eat milk products at all. Maybe some, <laughs> if I can get something from the range right away, from the, you know, then yeah. <laughs> but so it's just industry, industri industrial, you know, processed, you know, whatever, what, what they put in the chemical shit. Yeah, cottage cheese. That was my game plan. <laughs> That's the secret. Obviously it worked, huh? It's crazy, yeah. But you know, uh, we, we all grew up on, on milk. All, all the, uh, you know, my generation, we, we all had not enough, uh, you know, uh, meat. Uh, you know, at home we all had uh, something with milk, products, you know, cotton cheese, yogurts, whatever. That's what I ate after workout, pre-workout. Yeah. guys from the gym had as, as videos. It was Dorian Yates, he's training, and uh, Kevin Leroy, uh, Leroy. And then uh, there was Flex, Wheeler, Ronnie Coleman, Dennis James, you know, all of those guys. But the first what I saw on, on the video was Kevin Roney and Dorian. Uh, Kevin Lebroni, Maryland Muscle Machine? Yeah. yeah. Three. yeah. I, I remember this. Uh, the first scene, they, they were in the restaurant eating spaghetti. Yeah, that, that was my the first video. So, but uh, the influence to get the sport was Arnold. The first movie was I saw the, the first one was Running Man and the Predator. Those were the two first movies I saw. And uh, Conan and all these movies I saw later. Terminator, all later. But, these two were, I think they're from the same year, like 87 or so. So I was, yeah, nine years old. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. 
Right, guys this is it five days out mr o 2014 ha. yeah that was the uh, last chest workout um there was not much uh, power in there but we had a good pump good workout uh, the chest is full uh, yeah uh, got three more days left of workouts and then uh, thursday is day off a lot of work, press conference, uh, meet, the, uh, meet the Olympians at night, and uh, Friday is going to be a whole day just waiting, uh, checking condition <laughs> until uh, 7 p.m. Uh, I guess we're going to be on stage at 8 p.m. Pacific time. So, guys, thanks for support. I can't wait to compete. Uh, can't wait to see all the guys on stage, and uh, I uh, expect them to be the best ever. And uh, yeah, looking forward to move up a little bit uh, on my spot. And I think uh, I did what I can. I did my homework, I did my diet. Uh, the prep was great, the workout was great, great training partner. A lot of uh, help from him uh, in the gym, also so private. And uh, of course my wife, she's always uh, holding my back. And uh, thanks a lot to the fans, MoscowDaron.com. Amex Nutrition, Chic, and all the fans. Who 
What's up, guys? Juan Dizamuro here. Um, doing a little bit of chest, and um, right now I'm waiting for John De La Rosa. So we're actually gonna just start, and he'll just catch up with us at the beginning or middle of the work. I'm not sure. All right, guys, let's um, put some work in. We're here at the East Coast Mecca. Ah, uh, there we go. 263.4. A little bit on the light side. I'm actually, like, right now from this point on, I'm, like, when I was getting ready for Brazil, it was, like, 255 right now, 256. Do you have a certain approach that you're taking or are you just kind of winging it? Uh, I think I'm just kind of winging this workout. Yeah, just whatever I feel like doing. I kind of want to super sit it with biceps, so I don't know if I'm probably um, yeah, bring some dumbbells over here. And yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I like the pump. I chase the pump. So we just start doing like over here at the Mecca, just Weight guys to put our weights back, get his weights, be a lot easier. So I usually just do free weights, but um, past few weeks since I um been um I train by myself, but the past few weeks since I just been how can I say um. I wanted to ask people for a spot when I get out to like my heavier sections, like four plates. Kind of just want to get through a workout without having to go look for somebody. So just do it here. And, uh, you know, once I hit the all season, I'll go back to doing three weights and flat bench. But now I'm just doing a Smith. Feels good anyway. I'm feeling uh, good contraction. So, um, you know, I, honestly, it's not like. Chest is a lagging body part where I can, you know, that I need to hit a certain, you know, free weights all the time. Right now, I'm just three weeks out, three and a half weeks out, so, you know, it's all right. I kind of feel like this isolates more than the free weight. I mean, I know the free weight targets a lot more muscle, but right now, since I'm pre-contest, I feel like, I'm, you know, this is okay. That's my lovely wife over there. Supporting me. Showing me a lot of love. Driving me to the gym because I was falling asleep on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> John's just walking in, the food in his hand, that means he's not ready. I'm not supposed to eat until 7, bro. Take over the weight? Yeah. What are you eating, John? We just had 12 ounces of tilapia and uh, one cup of rice. It's uh, not my favorite meal, but it's what's necessary, so getting it down and then uh, jumping in and training. Fine with the fish, it digests real easy and you can work out mm -hmm. with no problems. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I typically can eat and train right away. I never really had an issue with it, so.
running around all over the place may be a little too much right now. I trained chest and arms earlier, now I'm training it again. That's not something that's unusual for me, I do that a lot. This, this month alone, I might have done it three times already. Uh, I don't have a lot of rules when it comes to training, I just kind of train the way I feel. If I feel good or if I just want to do something, I do it. I mean, I have my specific days where I train a certain body part, but if I feel like training again that same day, I will. So, you know, no rules. How do you feel about that, John? Juan like has thing? a very unorthodox way of doing things, and obviously it works for him. Um, you know, I'm kind of the old school, you know, Monday you do this, Tuesday you do that. Um, but as I've learned and grown, you kind of, kind of learn to go by feel. Um, so it's not always, our right, Monday's our chest day, Tuesday's our back day. Some days, you know, you might skip it and do something else and switch things around or double up. Um, so, you know, you kind of learn and go as you go along as you learn. Obviously, Juan has figured out and mastered what's worked for him, so you gotta keep going with it. For me, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, still trying to get my ground under me and figure things out for myself. Right now, I feel like I'm in a good groove, growing little by little. And, uh, you know, finding finding what works for me as well. So. This kid is a beast. Mm. Train with this guy, and you gotta step your game because okay. he ain't no joke. <laughs> Only in certain things. In others, still gotta get a lot better. You gotta get 12, I got 10. Wait, you hear the pressure? You gotta get 12. One, two, three. Okay, ready? Yep. Then after the four, as many as I can do, I'm gonna drop to like three or two. Yeah. Okay, can you help? Can you help strip it? Yeah. I love John. I think he's an amazing bodybuilder. I'm a huge fan of his. Not only is he my brother, but I'm a huge fan, and he always has my support and has the support of my family. When we at shows, you hear my family screaming for him. Yeah. So it's like, it's uh, it's never, we're never against you. I don't compete against anybody in the IFB. You know, I love everybody, I'm, I'm friends with everybody. So, you know, it's all about me being a better me, you know? Okay. Oh. Oh. 
Not as big as John's, but they're getting there. Sixties right now. There's no lot of pulling right now, but uh, 
you know, I'm not trying to be running Coleman. All right. I promise the next video, we got 200 pounders on I'll do it for you guys. Because right now, this is my second chest workout, so, for the day, so, 160s is the most you're going to get now. How many reps you want, John? 15. 15? 13. Unlucky number. <laughs> I'll give you guys a sneak peek of what I look like right now. Let's go in here. I love this stuff. I honestly can't believe that in three weeks, in five days, I'll be in that this Olympic stage. Like, it just all actually started hitting me this week. Actually, like, the, yesterday or today, I'm like, wow, I can't believe it. It's amazing. Calorie cheat day yesterday. Can you tell? Not really, Sorry. right? Can you wait? about the weight just be tighter or coming forward to the Olympics. Shut up all the haters. <laughs> yeah.
Hey, what's up, guys? We just finished up over here doing some chest, a little bit of biceps. Now, um, I'm gonna go do some cardio. And then we'll see you guys tomorrow. That's it. I got two more exercises, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow for some shoulders. Stay tuned, guys. Now it's a party. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Phil Heath, the gift, three time Mr. Olympia. Man, another year. Battle for the Olympia, 2014, baby. We're here over at Armbrust Pro Gym, and uh, we are officially 10 days out from the 2014 Mr. Olympia contest, obviously held in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the Orleans Arena. It's the 50th anniversary, and I am pretty, pretty excited. I mean, a lot of things have changed, you know. Uh, obviously, I got a new supplement company. I've uh, been doing a lot of different other business ventures and stuff, but let's be serious. It has not distracted me from killing these weights. We're going to do some arms today. Um, you know, I'm really excited about that because uh, this particular prep, I've actually been able to train them every week. Um, so normally people that don't know, uh, arm training for me has always been pretty, uh, I don't want to say easy, but uh, easier is one of my strengths. Uh, over the course of my career, I had to make sure that I uh, kept, you know, not just symmetry, but also balance issues, making sure that the chest along with the shoulders and everything else would uh, coincide with these arms. Uh, so then you don't just be on stage and say, hey, he just has arms and that's it. So obviously over the past few years, I mean, you know, a lot of due diligence has been done, making sure that I was crossing all the T's out and all the I's, but I noticed something last year at 2013, Mr. Olympia, no one commented about my arm development. So I kind of felt like, huh, maybe I finally caught up. So now, going into this year, I felt in order to get bigger back, to get bigger chest and shoulders, I need to train the arms more too, because we all know with back, you pull, sometimes with your forms, with biceps, obviously with presses, you know, with the triceps. So I'm gonna show you a little workout that I normally do. Um, it's fairly quick, but it's very efficient. Uh, energy's pretty good right now. I mean, obviously I've just, you know, gotten my third meal in of the day. Carbs are fairly moderate. Uh, weight is still good, over 260. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, last year, weighed in at 248 pounds on uh, both nights. And that was usually about 25 to 30 pounds less than the other guys. So this year going in, the main focus is to just refine what I did right last year and making sure that I cross all the T's, dot all the I's, like I say, but make sure that when we're talking about perfect practice, we make sure that we're doing everything correctly and with good tempo and good technique because we can always practice bad habits. So when you hear people say practice makes perfect, kind of give them a shrug, like what do you mean? Because if I'm practicing bad habits, I only get half the gains. So all the time you train in here, you may not be doing your personal best because let's face it, sometimes doing your personal best may involve a little cheating, a little hunching over and this and that. I'm not really trying to do that at this point in time in my career, especially with arm training. The last thing I want to do is tear something, especially 10 weeks out, getting drier, getting harder, more vascular. All the work really is almost completed. Uh, cardio is usually the most important thing at this point. It's trying to shred up a little bit more, getting the upper glutes ready, the hamstrings and the calves. All those things that we usually can't see that the judges see behind it uh, when we face the curtain are the things that I'm really focusing on right now. And obviously keeping my mind solid because I'm going against the best bodybuilders in the world. These guys, let me tell you, They've all earned the right to go up on that stage. I'm going against Arnold Classic champions, multiple Arnold Classic champions. I'm going against guys that have won, pretty much every guy has won something. At some period of time in their life as an IFBB pro, they didn't, there was no luck for them to get here. They all earned their right. And you know, you always get asked the questions, Phil, what about this guy? What about that guy? I do respect it. I do respect these guys, but I have to keep in mind one major thing. When you're number one in the world three times over, you have to keep confident in your ability to do it again. Otherwise, hand them the trophy. But I always have the mentality of, do I go to the job interview to get the job or not? Do I expect to get an A grade on the test? Well, I was once told and I once heard from a friend of mine who shared this uh, quote from me from, uh, I think it was Russell West, uh, not Russell, uh, Russell Wilson, from the quarterback from the uh, Se uh, Seattle Seahawks. They asked him about how does he get ready for these, you know, games and what makes him be better than most of these other guys so early in his career. <laughs> he said preparation, separation. So that's what we're going to go do in here. 
and uh, have some fun while we're at it. All right. You guys, uh, this is Dylan Ambrose. This is the man who actually owns the gym that I've been so kind to attend. And <laughs> he's been able to give me a key as well, so I can come in here whenever I like. I beat the weights up while he's gone, but I promise I usually put them back 95% of the time. Even on leg day, I actually put the weights back. Or I just blame somebody else and say they did it. Except for when Honey Rambot didn't tell me this shit all over. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> True. I think it might be a five finger death punch there. Yeah, it's gonna be five finger death punch too. Yep, so my general approach on arms is this. I mean, everybody loves them. Balance is the key, so obviously the symmetry issues from right to left. You're gonna, if they're real arms, one arm is going to be bigger than the other. It's the way it is. Your goal is, then, is to assess why. Utilize the exercises that work for you. You don't have to change up your arm workout or any other workout every week. Sometimes I feel like with my arm training, I need like even 8 to 12 weeks of the same routine. I usually start off using biceps because I feel like my biceps go always better. My triceps already, I think, are pretty good because they just kind of stick out, um, literally. So I usually try to get those knocked out first. I've done things where I've done one bicep exercise and a tricep. I've done them all, but I know it's for me right now. Um, doing, starting off with some type of barbell curl movement, some type of dumbbell curl, and then I usually stick with that and usually do like a machine toward the end. And then um, I'll do that same workout but then maybe switch up the order. So what I did last, I'll do first for that next week. And that's another way of changing things up, but I usually don't change up too much. sure this is not resting too long. I know how you guys are. You guys be out here checking out on Facebook and Instagram and stuff in between sets. Can't do that right now. You lose your pump. She's around a minute, minute and a half. Like I said, it's arms.
see these seated too, but having so much sitting down is tough enough. It's kind of like a, you know, you focus, but arms for is like fun day, so it kind of breaks up the prep a little bit, just because it's not something I never really have to like, you know, really feel about. When it comes to arm training, I've always made sure I did some type of prone in movement. And also, really trying to focus on like that real deep concentration. Um, I noticed that it feels good. It hurts a little bit, but what do most people talk about? How separated his arms are. So, really when it comes to the bicep, I always want to make sure I have not just the split, but the definition within that. I see a lot of guys with different peaks and stuff like that, but the, the craziness, the, the, the detail that you're going to see, the muscles actually firing, that's usually what I'm tracing for, so I'm willing to do any type of exercise where I can manipulate those fibers to where you see before you that are actually moving. That's how I know more muscle activation, more muscle growth. Because um, sometimes you see me doing things a little bit slower, because I actually, maybe I am admiring my work a little bit, at the same time, that's what produces more motivation because you know that it's working. So anytime you see something working, you're going to be like, okay.
the Chinese stock, which I do not know how long train here this early. Some pizza friends.
show you guys something funny. Show you how thin that skin is. Even better. That's what you know. It's going to be ultra thin, so then the muscle is going to pop. See how low you can go, still stay full and grip at the same time. A lot of cats can't even get out of bed on the hundred pounds.
it together is actually hard. Such a left arm's actually better. It's like the first time I did a pro show, my mom saw me compete. I tried to play it cool. I saw how Macy in my face was, thought I was freaking dying. She waited until I left the house, she bawled her eyes out. Oh my God, he's dying. Now he's dying. I'm sure. I don't know what she looks at like better. Chubby cheeks or no face at all. I guess we always go with which one we look younger. Shout out to the guys over at AMI Reader, the ladder company as well. Uh, uh, all the athletes too. I mean, all you guys that are participating in the Battle for the Olympia, um, you know, you guys are the reason, along with myself, as to why these fans are getting so pumped up. I mean, it's because of us, and it's because of you, the, the viewer. Um, we feed off each other, and essentially, that's what body does about feeding off of energy, being positive, taking negative, turning it positive, uh, taking struggle and turning it to triumph. Um, but this this uh, this year's show, uh, I think there's 18 guys, 18 or 19. So I guess I got to pack a, a bigger mag magazine. If you know what I mean. So I got to knock these guys off, and um, they're all training very very hard. They're all preparing very very well. Um, they all get my respect because that's face it. I mean they they put their name on the paper to say that they want to be Mr. Olympia. And as any warrior of any would say is that I oblige your challenge and I will see you in Vegas. Uh, I love challenges. I love the fact that I'm in a privileged position being a multiple instrumental, being a televised, and going against guys once again that really want what I have. Because it reminds me of what I do have and it makes me accountable to not take things for granted. The reason why I smile and the reason why I talk the way I do is because I'm actually enjoying the process. And a lot of people, I think over time, have failed to realize one key element. Stop and smell those roses. At least enjoy the journey. I'm 34 years old. Um, I don't plan on competing for another eight to 10 years. Uh, so therefore, I've got to really take those 50 workouts within a year, or 40 workouts or whatever, it's very, very serious because those essentially will equate to whether I gained or lost anything on stage. 
you know, I'm having a blast, man. I mean, I got all my family and friends coming. Um, you know, I'm dedicating this one to my late father, uh, Don Heath, who passed away in March. And, um, you know, I have you guys to thank for watching this DVD. Thank these guys on Facebook. Don't pirate their stuff and, you know, put it up on the time. Go out and support these guys because they fly out at a drop of a dime to come film guys like me. And me filming for people like you. It's all revolutions. We're all trying to help each other out and give and take and give and take and give. You don't see very many bodybuilding DVDs anymore. These guys are making it happen. Support these guys. Go on my video. Make sure you, you know, support them. Go on their Facebook. Make comments. You're bad ugly. You're bad ugly. Make the comments, but like their stuff because the best face it, you're watching the best bad. You are the best badass mofos in the world. Change for the freaking Olympic title. And I'm very, very excited to be a part of that Elite 13. Um, well, that said, I think it's time for me to get my ass home, and I'll see you guys in Vegas. So until next time, hopefully it's four time. What a bicep shot to come out. Cool, guys. See you in Vegas. Four for four. We're out. guys, Steve Kuklo here, Battle for Olympia 2014 for the 50th anniversary of Mr. Olympia. Welcome to my house. Uh, you guys just came on time because we are getting ready to start getting in the pre-workout mode. I have my food that I'm going to start cooking up. I have my, uh, we're training arms today. So we're going to get ready for that. We've got about an hour till we train. So come in, we'll check out my house and uh, a little bit what we're getting ready to do. So we're in Dallas. It's 100 degrees outside, so it's kind of... Uh, just like Vegas is, so I feel good, uh, acclimated to the weather. Um, I've been in this house for about a year and a half with my fiance Allison, and um, it's uh, it's perfect. You know, it's it's one of those things for me. I love to entertain, love to be with friends, and and it's a good size to have that. And obviously, it's one of the highlights to the house is the kitchen, because there's a lot of room, um, because a lot of food and cooking is done there. Um, but sitting uh, two weeks out, just actually a week and a half out. Um, my food is pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, I wish I could say we're going to um, Whataburger or my favorite burger place right now to get a meal, but not yet, or you know, maybe a few weeks ago. But today, um, before my workout right now, I'm on meal three. I have tilapia and sweet potato. Um, one of my sponsors, Icon Meals, has been sponsoring me through this off season, and since they started up, I've been with the company and uh, they've helped quite a bit when it comes to food prep and just awesome food. So they pretty much weigh everything for me. I give them my meal plan for the week and they, they have everything delivered. Uh, so it's an awesome service. Convenience is huge for me, especially with time as prep is going and everything. So um, we'll get you to take a little uh, sneak peek of what's in the fridge for uh, Steve Kuklo, the King Snake. We got all my meals. I have some of Ellison's food. Obviously, it's kind of dominated by me just a little bit. Um, <laughs> but all my meals are uh, labeled with my name. Icon Meals it is. Uh, I get fresh food every two to three days. I have a lot of tilapia and chicken in there, a little bit of salmon, a little bit of steak. You know, I have my carbs um, with brown rice and sweet potatoes. So some of the things, the way I'm doing it now is I have all my protein separated and then I have my like carbs separated because it changes on a daily basis with Hani and when he's uh, you know giving me updates okay today go 200 grams of carb versus 300 grams tomorrow or something so instead of you know remeasuring stuff I just have everything separated that way I could uh, as day-to-day -day basis just kind of just wing it so uh, we're gonna pull out some tilapia and some sweet potatoes just boiled basic sweet potatoes and um, I have some tilapia that I've kind of already pulled aside, and we're going to go ahead and measure this out. So protein's super high right now. I'm getting between 10 to 12 ounces of uh, protein cooked per meal. Right now fish is 12 ounces, so 
Um, that's almost a pound raw. So it's a lot of food uh, when it comes to protein. And I wish I could eat a little more carbs or some of the good stuff, but uh, not yet. <laughs> so we're going to weigh this out. And it'll be a legit 12 ounces. We'll go a little bit more today because you guys are here. 12.2. Clear that. And I'll go with, um, I'm going with 8 to 10 ounces a meal of uh, sweet potatoes that's cooked away. Um, so I kind of do a little bit special uh, concoction between these two. I actually combine them. I like mash it all up and... and uh, put a, a ton of cinnamon. I'm a huge cinnamon fan, especially as I diet further and further. Um, it helps uh, kind of mask the flavor, adds a little spice to uh, tilapia, which you wouldn't think it's good when you throw it together, um, but it's actually really good. And I throw a little bit of Splenda on there, and um, so we got right around 10 ounces. I'm going to warm this up, and then I'll load it up uh, with my special little concoction. All warmed up. One of the things I, I personally, it's kind of a personal thing, when I get a lot of, uh, my protein in my diet goes up, I get a lot of heartburn. Or it's, it's, you know, and I don't eat a lot of spicy foods, and I eat pretty bland. And I've learned over time kind of what my body likes and, and dislikes. But, um, you know, I, I find as I diet and get farther in, uh, my heartburn increases. I think it's because the amount of protein honey has me eaten. But um, this is kind of a ridiculous amount of cinnamon. But when you mix it all up, it's uh, not too bad. I'm going to add a little Splenda to it. It's just kind of weird, man. Have a, little, have a little food with your cinnamon? Yeah, have a little, have a little tilapia with my cinnamon here. There's guys, it's funny, there's guys that work within the fire department that probably put that much pepper on eggs and stuff like that. And I'm like, how do you do that? But in the same way, I guess, you know, people could ask, how do I eat that much cinnamon? <laughs> But yeah, this is uh, what I like to eat pre-workout. Obviously, it's pretty easy to... It doesn't look like that much cinnamon now, so I'm not crazy. But we're going to sit down and eat. Yeah, one, one. Sloppy never tastes so good. I only eat it when I'm dieting. I'm ne I'll never order tilapia uh, at a restaurant or... Uh, I'll never. You'll never see me cook it in off-season. It's not something I do not like uh, outside of dieting. Because, I mean, the stuff that you eat when you diet is nowhere near as good as it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you're like, I would never eat just lettuce by itself. It tastes good when you diet. <laughs> Fresca. It's clear, honey. So, no. um, every once in a while, I'll have a, uh, a diet drink and... Uh, just to kind of cure sweet tooth or to top off a meal, stuff like that. It's in off season, you know. I, I usually like to have something sweet, like a pop tart after <laughs> after a meal, or a um, bowl of cereal, or something along those lines. But obviously, I'm not going to be eating any pop tarts right now. And uh, this is uh, this is a nice little treat. I just have a few sips, and then uh, we'll get ready to uh, make a pre workout drink and stuff. So, um, I'll show you a little bit of the house. Um, and here I've, it's kind of like a nice little comfortable living room area. We got the TV up here. Um, and then I do a lot of my work through the day. In here is my office. It's a little bit messy, but um, pretty much live on this right now, twice a day. I get up in the morning, have my cup of coffee, I take my uh, Eugen Fat Burner Life Aside, and I jump on this thing. It's uh, Becomes my worst and best friend at the same time. I don't know how that's possible, but um, you know, I got I do all my emails and stuff here. I got the pictures, autographs. I just got all my new suits in for the O. So potential colors I'll be uh, I'll be using. Um, got some orders. I put some orders here, and Allison does help him with some orders. Um, if you want, I play guitar. I don't play guitar, but actually, um, one of my very good friends. Zach Wild, that's uh, his addition. I'm actually really good uh, 
he's his one of his songs I'm using for my posing routine. But we're actually really good friends. He's a huge fan of the sport. Anybody that's uh, into rock music or under, that follows, uh, uh, you know, I know Ozzy Osbourne, anything like that. Black Label Society, Zach Wild, and Zach's my brother from another mother. And I, anytime he comes to Texas or around here, I go see him. And so he's uh, I'm gonna he, he's gonna sign that for me uh, next time he comes in. And uh, um, I got some trophies. I got obviously my Honor Brazil trophy. It's the most recent one. Um, that's kind of the, the, the shrine of, of all of them. I have um, <clears throat> my Mr. USA ones upstairs. Uh, getting a little dusty, but I need to, you know, it's nice to every once in a while look back and be like, that was a hell of a trophy to get. Um, and then I have uh, my Europa trophy. Anybody that's one of Europa has got that big old ugly looking dude, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. That's the... Uh, the, also the first place with that and then you know I got just a few pictures up here um, big believer in, in God and I know through uh, through him he, he helps me through the hard times in life and uh, I'm just uh, you know I'm, I'm blessed I'm blessed to be healthy anybody has their health and, and a good family good support system and to be able to do what they do and, and uh, love it in life is, is blessed and and uh, I'm able to share this with you guys, and I appreciate you guys coming out, being able to be uh, any fan of mine, anybody that, that that's, thinks I'm interesting, I inspire them, I thank you, because you guys inspire me, so it's awesome to be, uh, be able to share this. Here we got a uh, little dining room. Um, <clears throat> love, uh, this, this is kind of was my selling point to my house, was, you know, I was like, I don't need a pool, I don't need a pool, and then... Uh, and then I, you know, living in Texas when it's 100 degrees during the summer, I'm like, you know what, I think I want a pool. Um, so it's not a huge pool, but it's enough to fit four or five people in and be comfortable. It's laying some brass, so I get some sun out here. Very, very quiet and private neighborhood. I live. So we're about to take our pre-workout, um, you know, week and a half out of Olympia this time. Energy level has been kind of low. So... I don't go over the top with STEM, and that's kind of from when I started taking Evigen. The EVP was one of the base products that they had, and it was a STEM-free pre-workout, and it was kind of one of the only ones on the market. And I got used to training without STEM for so long that I don't usually like to take the STEM before because it kind of, to me, you don't get as good a pump. And when you go so long without the STEM, you do feel the difference. So um, I do add STEM, though, right now, being a week and a half out, and like I said, energy's low. Uh, I had a little bit. We have the EVP Plus now through Evagen, which is, uh, it has about 150 milligrams of caffeine in, in a serving, and I, I do one serving of that, and then I do two servings of the uh, the standard non-stem. So I do about So I'll mix up um, about 8 to 10 ounces of water, and then I use this Iceland Springs water. It's alkaline-based water. It's naturally 8.88 on the alkaline level, and um, I feel it hydrates me better. And it's one of those things where it may be placebo or not, but the water tastes better. And it, it you know, I never feel like I, if I drink a, if I drink like 16 ounces of water, I'd be, God, I feel, you feel kind of bloated from it. Like I can drink, you know, 32 ounces of this and, and it just feels like it hydrates me better. And, and I feel less bloated from water, as silly as that sounds. It's, it's just, you know, one of those things that, that I find work. So, um, I take this, I fill this up through the workout. Uh, and I drink the rest of this during my workout. Um, and then, you know, I, I take the cell chem, which is your branch chain amino acids. I take a sip during and then post uh, workout. So that's what I got going today. We're going to knock this pre-workout out and uh, make our way to the gym. So it's about 20, 20 to 30 minutes before I train. I've got about an hour um, since I ate. So we're going to go ahead and take this and we'll be ready to knock out some arms. All right, we're just getting to the gym. Destination Dallas, we're about to knock out some arms, so let's do this. This is the Central Mecca. <laughs> we got East Coast, West Coast, and this is the Texas Mecca. So let's do it. 
28 years. <laughs> Big Lou right, right here. Right out of memory. Represent Team Snake. Mr. Texas, the newly crowned. <laughs> and Dan is um, he's over there with the redhead. Chatty Cathy. He's always talking too much. So. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's getting technical with something. Not testicle, technical. So. <laughs> Steve's time. Steve's time to make an impact and show him that he's here to play. Oh yeah, big Kuklo. I'm excited <laughs> for him. He looks good. He looks really good. How long have you known him? I've known Steve for about three and a half years now. We've been training partners for, we're coming on two years. Oh yeah. Pushing you to a new level, you're learning new stuff? Yes, oh, you know, so many times I forget that Steve's one of the best in the world, you know. To me, Steve's just my friend and then, and then you know. Hey, nobody. Well, it hits me like, you know, wow. So I'm really fortunate that I get the opportunity to train with a guy like that. He just recently helped me with my prep and it was amazing. You know, I looked my best ever and I won the Texas State overall there three weeks ago. And yeah, like I said, I just forget who he is because we're just buddies, you know. And Steve's a good guy. Uh, he honestly wouldn't be my friend. <laughs> Steve, uh, you know, anybody that runs into Steve is very well received. He's, he's, he, he enjoys helping people. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd be eating tilapia this week. That's Dan. <laughs> it's my sponsorship. They sponsor me in the off season a lot. It's gonna hit, uh, fun fat. I got a great crew. I mean, that's the people that you surround yourself with in this sport. The people that you have. Uh, uh, there with you day by day and through the, the ups and downs of this is, is that's your team. That's who you depend on. It's not it's an individual sport, but the people that you share successes with and ups and downs, that's your team. And these people are here uh, to support me, so I'm blessed to have them with me. Uh, so I'm gonna knock it out. Um, I feel like if you go too heavy or too low on rep, I don't get anything out of it. Like with arms, I like to feel you know so the pump kind of. Um, and I feel it helps shape the muscle, allow, and it really helps your arms to grow. The arms are something you use every day, so they can handle the volume. And um, for me, I, I've found a lot of benefit from volume, and you know, I do a lot of supersets, um, a lot of like back and forth by try. Sometimes I'll just do straight by, where I'll do like a, a trip or like a, a superset or giant set with, with buys or tries. So I, I usually go back and forth. Uh, We'll warm it up a bit today because you know joints are a little bit dry and stuff hurting a little bit more as, as we're drying out. But uh, we'll kind of get warmed up and then knock out some, some good stuff. So let's we'll see where we're at. Since we're a little bit busy tonight in the gym and just to kind of keep it all in one area for you guys that are filming. Energy uh, conservation. <laughs> we do like a close grip. Uh, we use kettlebells. Um, we can use platforms, but we're going to use uh, these kettlebells kind of keep our, as like a V uh, close grip push up. Get some blood flowing. He has, he has worn those shoes every training session since, <laughs> since you on the Arnold. Yeah, I got a little bit superstitious about my shoes. It's not that I don't own more than one pair of shoes. Um, it's just that this turned into my favorite training shoe. And being an athlete, you're a little bit superstitious. So. Can't take these guys anywhere.
I always like to go first, because whatever I do, Steve's got to do five more. <laughs> This is my third training partner, fiance. Um, the 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 uh, what do they call it? Like the um, person that cracks the whip. This 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 one right here. The, the key to the the dog house. <laughs> she holds. This is Allison Front. Is she IBB Pro? She's two weeks, sub two weeks out of Mr. Miss Olympia. Uh, Miss Olympia uh, for figure. She's an incredible athlete, uh, training partner, person, uh, hardest working uh, competitor I know. And um, she inspires me because, I mean, it, to train with somebody so dedicated, so motivated, it's, it's impressive. So, um, yes, I do work hard and I'm excited to step on that stage, but really I'm, I'm even more excited for Steve. He, uh, he has such a bright future, and, and this year I think he's going to make a, a big impression. So, um, you know, he's, he's bringing it. His physique is the best I've ever seen him look, to be totally honest. I mean, I've been pretty much by his side for almost the past three years, seeing him in and out of the shows, and um, he always works hard, but he's never worked harder. Uh, he always looks good, but he's never looked better. And um, we're really excited to see what happens. Here, so, yeah. <coughs> Oh, 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 gym maintenance in between sets. Yep. 
Change over. One. Come on, Steve. Two. Come on, baby. Come on. All right, five reps. Five reps. What do you got? What do you made of? Five. Come on, Steve. Four. Come on. Three. Come on. Two. One time. Good. Nice set. Big set. One more, Steve. Squeeze. Nice. Good, Steve. Twelve reps, Steve. Yep. Come on. One, four, go for one. Come on, up. Whatever you want to do. Go back over. Over here. Yeah, man. I'm That's right. Look at this hunk of man. Something like that.
Man, arms are pumped. It kind of hurts. Let's go. Let's sit right here. Secure the top ten. Come on. Hup. Come on now. Come on. We uh, we kill it one day closer. It's, uh, we got that done in about an hour. You know, body parts at this point two weeks out. It's it's not to kill it. You just don't have the calories to carry it through. You were to be sore for five days, but you know, you get in, you stimulate it, take the muscle to failure, and call it a day, which, which we're doing right now. I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, my sponsors, Evagen Nutrition, who I've been with Hani and Evagen since the beginning back in 2011. Uh, Muscular Development, who's been by my side through pretty much amateur to pro. Uh, Icon Meals, Todd Abrams, you guys are great. Thank you for all the food. Um, everybody that does sponsor me, I got a few places local in Dallas that support me. Deli News, um, incredible. I got my friend Tom, my friend L. Um, you guys, my family. I also have um, wanted to kind of give you guys also, uh, if you ever online or anything, or you see me at any shows, I got my own apparel line, King Snake Apparel. Uh, the quality fit. The, uh, it's more of an inspirational type of, of apparel, workout oriented, but not necessarily dedicated just to workout. Uh, really good quality stuff. So if you guys, uh, I'm running some specials here and there, and uh, affordable, affordable, good quality shirts, uh, all made in the U.S. And I, I do them all myself. Uh, so it's, and I appreciate all the support I do get with that. So thank you guys again for coming out and all the uh, support from all my fans. Website. Okay. You guys can go to SteveKuklo.com or go to KingSnakeApparel.com. Yeah, here we are, 2014 Battle for the Olympia. Gonna get some leg blasting workout. My boy John De La Rosa here. Yeah. We'll be stepping on this stage together. So nothing less than balls to the walls, hard workout. Let's get it done. Come on. Over here, Big Vic and John just walked in with the two legs. Big Vic and Julio is okay with that. Over here, killing some hamstrings. They're about to do some legs. I think quads earlier. Doing leg extensions, warm up. And then, of course, we're going to go to the leg press after that. Um, just a little interesting leg press routine that Victor does. And then after that, we're going to probably go to hacks and lunges and so forth. Just doing that. Thank you. 
that's why I put a tie on. You guys Yeah. A little clean freak, so I can't start my workout without getting my uh, little wipey. <laughs> so I'll be back. <laughs> Better now. <laughs> Not everybody showers, bro. It's the admin effects, though. That way you never get skin problems. See, you use your machine, you clean your machine. Been a germaphobe? Uh, not really, just when I started working out. <laughs> as a pro. Now they're actually finally on the same stage and the biggest stage of Mr. Olympia. Epic.
last one. Feel good. Let's get it on. Come on, come on, let's last, last, eat it up, eat it up. Come on, come on, here, here, here. The other beastly Dominican stepping on that 2014 Mr. O is gonna be Platano Invasion. <laughs> Dominican invasion. Proud of him, man. Proud of him. Thanks a lot, Phil. Phil has got from the very beginning, 2007, yeah. took me under his wing. Every time I asked him questions, and you know, like uh, he was there, it never blew me off. And uh, no, from the very yeah, man. From the very said, beginning, like he was there, said, man. Lots of love. Like, like John, you saw it bleeding in his eyes, a passion hey, man, for and, it. And Munoz from the very no, beginning. No, always, always. Yeah. <laughs> Munoz actually trained me for a little bit in the very beginning. I'm going to know that. <laughs> Munoz, let them know. <laughs> Let's go, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can they care, always man. say we're only into baseball. <laughs> I want to say one thing in closing. It was an honor filming for Battle of Olympia. Bruce is the man. I mean, a true honor. I loved it and can't believe I actually made it to Battle of Olympia. Hopefully it's um first of many. Like you said, man, first of many. First of many. That's right. Let's get it on. How you feeling, John? Good. All this volume. Uh, this is, uh, legs are my best body part, but it's also something I love to train. No coincidence there, but the pump that we get from this particular exercise is crazy. So, Vic and I have been doing it for a little while now. And, uh, I mean, it's nothing like it. It's, you get a, like he was just saying earlier, it doesn't matter if you're having a good day or a bad day, you're going to get a pump no matter what doing this. So, <laughs> So it's good to do it, you know, especially being almost three weeks out of Olympia. You know, we're pushing hard. We're going to push for every last shred of energy that we can push through and, you know, bring the biggest, freakiest legs we can bring. This ain't no walk in the park. I'm going to be treated like a walk in the park. I'm going to get a walk in the park place in. Mental preparation before the, the next set. It's pretty serious. I'm better at this side than the rest of Let's go, Big John. Say, kick those wheels, baby. Do it. This is the Olympia, I mean. just gotta hurt more. Bigger pumps, more pain. Just bring those extra gains, you know. It's, uh, it's a few Olympias I'm not too proud of, but again, I made it there and uh, I, I didn't listen to myself. And I, I wanted to listen to other people and, and you just can't, you just can't listen to yourself. To have the best of the best in the world. Nobody knows your body 100%. You know, and it's just, I believe in that, and that's why, you know, I turn things around. Keep the thought, you know? Magic pad. The new sponsor. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, they ain't sponsoring, so we cover that. No, Very important when you fly. It's weird, but uh, you start noticing shit. Unwillingly. <laughs> How many people pick their noses, cough in their hands? Don't wash their hands after they use the bathroom. <laughs> the more I see, the more it grosses me out. I even wipe the menus in restaurants. <laughs> you know what they found most in restaurant menus? VCs. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Actually, it was this one time I was doing Preacher Pearls. It was in Florida. And I just went. Hardcore, fuck that, you know? And I get on the preacher and I'm putting my forms on the preacher and tricep. Next day, hammer time, I broke out. Contact dermatitis. Fuck that, we should stay on that shit. This is why we New Yorkers are so spoiled, you know? Back in the days, you had to move out to the West Coast, best equipment, best gyms, you know, contracts, the whole shebang. But we got the East Coast Mecca, you know? Very few gyms now, you can actually be yourself and have great workouts and great equipment. Most gyms now spend about 70% of their working dollars on the facade and nice tiles in the bathroom. This is a gym's gym. And I thank Steve and Bev for it. Now let's stop the shit talking and let's get this shit done.
crank it, crank it. <sighs> <sighs> Almost set. Then three, we did three wide, three close. The hole, the hole. I remember those things. Safety no. <laughs> first. Come on, John. Let's go. thought you had the best pump. You get it at the end. All for the O. All for the O. Right now it's getting that mind frame. Ready. Mindset. Focus. Steady thinking. All of it. How are you going to present yourself? How are you going to present the package you've been creating all this time? But basically all these years. Don't do it all, but you did the whole last year, you did the whole before. It's not about that. It's, it's about now. It's always about now for the Olympia. It's like every year for the Super Bowl, every year for the World Series. This is it. 50th anniversary. You gotta bring your best. And if you bought the best, you gotta bring even better. And uh, this is how we get to show, you know, the world. Because it's gonna be, uh, Nationally televised. This is how you show the world that this has got to be one of the hardest working sports, and uh, we're going to bring it right to your home. And, well, the finished product, at least, you know. And uh, I look forward to the day. Look forward to the day. Blasting routine. As tired as we are, we're hungrier. I'm not talking about food, that's the obvious. About stepping on that stage and making a statement. Making a statement all these years that we worked hard for. John here is making his parents proud, making himself proud. Stepping on that stage and his wife, nonetheless. <laughs> uh, me, same thing, my family, my kids. That's what drives us, you know? That's what drives us, that's what this is all about. Of course, we love what we do, but uh, nothing like the ultimate stage. Yeah, we're coming, man. Uh, it's an honor to be stepping on the Mr. Olympia stage. I've been following the sport, as many of you know, since I was a small child to my father. 
all the magazines and courts watching all the battle for the Olympias. So it's really cool to be a part of this and to be sharing in the history of the 50th anniversary of the Miss Olympia. Um, as Victor said, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be there, but I'm still hungry. I want to be, you know, have a great, great showing, make my family proud, make my wife proud, make Victor proud. He's been a great, great, great I'm already family. proud, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Since we got that phone call, I'm already proud. Well, he's been a great friend and a, an amazing mentor. Been blessed to have him in my corner. Victor Munoz, again, another person who's been instrumental in playing a part in what I've been able to accomplish in this sport. And again, my family, my friends, everybody's pushed me along. Stay tuned. 2014 Miss Olympia is going to be a blast. And uh, every year, since day one, I've dedicated each and every one of my shows to either a family member, one of my kids, uh, my sons and daughters. Uh, Victor's uh, he already beaten, uh, been through a tough time this year. He has beaten cancer. And right now, uh, he's going to go face another battle after the Olympia. And, uh, I have to say, this time around, I dedicate the show to him. Uh, he doesn't know this, but uh, it'll be a surprise when he sees this because uh, without him, believe it or not, we'll not be standing here. As crazy uh, Cuban as he is, you know, he turned this Dominican into the Dominican Dominator. And I thank you, Victor Munoz. Without leaving out, of course, my bloodlines, uh, that kept me going, that kept fuel in my fire. Uh, MHP, MD, you know, Steve Blackman, Gerard Dente, you guys that saw me through the bottom of the pits and through the top of the highest hills and uh, you never let me down, you never let me go. And all I could do is show gratitude and show the hard work I can do to represent our company, your company, the best ways I can. 2014 Olympia, here we go.
Hi guys, this is Rudy Winkler. Today we got to train a little bit back and bicep. You now it's like a couple of days out, and we gotta do something nice with that. Peace out. I um, want to let meet you my my trainer. This is Ahmed Oscar. He is from uh, Kuwait. For the national team, he trained everybody. He's the best, one of the best trainer in Kuwait. As you can see, this is Ahmed.
one. Four. شوف الجهاز ولا لا
Thanks for watching the Battle Olympia. I want to thank my sponsor, BSN and Flex. Peace out. guys we're here uh, shooting the battle for the Olympia I'm here with Victor Martinez Victor Munoz 
We're about to uh, get our shoulder session in, so stay tuned. It's dark matter, zero carb concentrate for the HP. Very first battle to the Olympia, man, huh? <laughs> so you're gonna get fired up, you know? Gotta make it count, this is in history in the making. Uh, our first Olympia together, we're gonna have nothing but fun, you know? Of course, with some ass kicking. But right now, let's just throw those belts, man. Let's do it. Oh, we do a little bit of rotated cuff, warm up the show is really good. So we prevent injuries. And then uh, probably gonna go uh, dumbbell shoulder presses after. Let's do some shoulder, uh, dumbbell shoulder press. Let's do some laterals, side laterals. On the third set, we'll do a shoulder press. Yeah. I feel good. Uh, trying to enjoy this process a little bit more than I did the earlier shows this year. My first Olympics. Just want to really relish in the moment and enjoy it. Because it could all go back so fast, you know? A lot of you guys know Victor as the athlete, I know Victor as the man, and truly an incredible person. I've been blessed to uh, have a mentor like him in my life, both Victors, Munoz as well. So. Still remember John walking up to me with this little four by six picture and saying, Look, this is how I look in my last show. And I'm like, Wow, you can turn pro. <laughs> and here we are getting ready for the 2014 Mr. Olympia. This is uh, life, it's amazing. I was uh, 172 pounds in that picture. And Victor had long been my idol. So I see him at our gym back at home in Star Fitness. And uh, I come up to him with my picture. I'm like, hey, Vic, I'm a big fan. What do you think about my pictures from my last show? And the rest is history. We've been great friends ever since then. Oh. There you go, Vic. 
Nothing like the Titans. Knock those shoulders out. Create that illusion. You're whiter than you are. Shoulder press right now and one midpoint. Alright? Midpoint is right. I came up with that, so we've been using it ever since. We're those.
Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. What are we doing here? Basically, the isolation movement for the rear delt. When you generally do back, you tend to still work your rear delts. So a lot of times, I might incorporate this is a behind the neck flat pull down. It works rear delts. When I usually do back, I incorporate maybe one or two rear delt movements. They're already pretty exhausted. And I do chest. I incorporate a couple of side lateral movements. It's already pretty exhausted. So why not give it a little tinge or something? You know, especially pre contest Any little detail helps, you know. And that's what this is about, right?
Go, Big John. Got this, man. Is this four? I thought we did four already. No, we did three. Oh, this is the drop. This is the drop. This is the Olympia, baby. <laughs> You're in big. There you go, John. <laughs> Yeah, man, burn it, baby. Come on, pump that blood. There you go. Beautiful. Coming. We're coming. Go, big, big. Three chin down, dumbbell, and then three. You know those turkey legs you can buy at the fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like almost dead, right? Legs <laughs> 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 like you. Yeah. Watch his form. That's how you get that big back. Drugs now. Uh, we did 70. Go increments of 20. 80, 100, 120, right? No, uh, these were reversed. Uh, 
hit the rum boys. Now we're gonna hit shrug, chin up, hit the peak of the traps. Most people don't realize traps actually have a couple of separate muscles. There's the top and there's the rear. And people tend to mostly do the, the top or the rear only. And it takes away from the fullness when you do the most muscular. Things gave out. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> You're pumped all workout, man. Gentlemen, boys and girls, fans from around the world, welcome to Joe Weider's 50th Olympia. We have 17 of the best bodybuilders in the world. Let's hit that music and let's bring them out. Olympia fans, are you ready? Jojo Natibaro. 
My co-host for the event, give it up for the menace, Dennis James. Thank you, Bob. Whoops. Welcome, everybody in Las Vegas. Thank you. The 50th anniversary, Bob. I'm pumped. I don't know about you, but I'm totally pumped. You look pumped. about you guys? I'm going to start this off right. I'm going to go right to Phil. Speak to the champ. Phil, three-time Miss Olympia, you come in here, you get your fourth title. We had a conversation last year at this very same time on this stage about a guy that's coming to defeat you. Yeah. Who signed the poster last year as the 2013 Miss Olympia. Yeah. Now, yesterday, Mr. Green signed the poster again with the 2014 Mr. Olympia. What else do you say to that? Answer the question. Have, I mean, let's be serious. I mean, haven't you learned from last year what you did? <laughs> and, and let's be serious. I mean, all, all jokes aside, there's been 13 Mr. Olympias. 
they've all had the right, you know, they've earned that right to be able to write that on anything. So don't disrespect the game. The people that root for you, that root for that type of behavior, I just don't understand. I agree. This is ridiculous, but, um, but the greatest thing about it, the cool thing about it is, is that uh, just like I said last year, you know, I'll be able to write that four time on Sunday, and it's going to be really good. It's going to feel really nice. Retire. Who's that? Oh, Mr. George Farrell. Oh, gosh. Speak up. This guy? This guy? Oh, man. This is... So, um, you know, real quick, we won't, we won't address these guys. I mean, I'm going to address my trainer, Honey Rambon. And, uh, you know, Honey and I have, you know, worked together for quite some time. And uh, this gentleman has not lost an Olympia since, uh, I want to say, 2009. He's done a great job getting guys like myself, you know, in perfect shape. And that's what we intend to do, you know, tomorrow night. Um, enough trash talk. I mean, we've done our talk and we've earned three sandals. I mean, to your zero, George. So, I mean, you need to just sit back, relax, and uh, let, let the sandals talk, man. Get out of here. Wow. This is wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and supporting us today. This is really, 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 really big. Um, this is an amazing weekend we have in store for you all because we're going to show you how talk is so cheap. It's so cheap. The past is the past. And we need to respect what was done in the past because it's already been written. But the truth is, the future, the future is not you. Is what we this weekend. This weekend, we will show you what the future brings. And I'm very, very proud to represent those people that believe and think about the power of unlimited potential and the future being not dictated by the past. The past is the past. In the future, though, you don't need to address George in the audience. Because you won't stand on stage against George. I represent what George is bringing. You just make it hard, you do what you're supposed to do. And we'll show you what we can do. This sounds like a real war in the world. This is what the 50th Olympia is all about, guys. I mean, you guys, you guys wanted it, we're going to bring it. You know, and that's what it's all about. You know, obviously tensions are very high. We all want to be Mr. Olympia. That's what we train for. That's what we all got into this sport to do, is to become a champion. Now, all these guys have earned their right to challenge for that title. Can I even tell you something? You, you haven't earned a point. You haven't earned a point. A point in four and a half years. You're narrow. It's not a half It's That's bodybuilding. It's like, what? You know what? I'll tell you this. You know what's I'll tell you great. This. I want you to be just as gracious on Sunday. <laughs> I can't wait to hear the interview on Sunday. <laughs> this is great. I want to hear you in your eyes on Sunday. Hey, yeah. the way this is Sunday. That's great. I'll represent yeah. the people that are looking forward to Sunday. like this, man. That's right. It's not desperate. I'm going to show you desperate how you do it on quarter turn. Oh, yeah. How about that? Yeah. Talk is cheap, man. I mean, we, you know, we've done this. We've well, done you can this finish, dance. go to the hotel room and say a prayer. We've done this dance, man. Three, three, hotel three, zero. Three, zero. Say a prayer. Three, zero. Say a prayer. It is. Three, say zero. Prayer. The Sunday's here. Maybe. Excuse me. Maybe we should just let George and Holly do it out. What does Guinness Wolf do while these guys are busy? Your fan base was out in full force. You brought your best ever to the Olympia stage. The smoke cleared. Kai was in second place, but there was a lot of people that thought Dennis Wolf should have been the runner-up last year. Yeah. Last year was last year. 
And I think uh, I beat him on Friday. Saturday was, I think, we both look great on Saturday, but uh, I don't know. It's the past. Tomorrow is the day again. And what I can say is just beware the wolf. <laughs> Can Sean Rowland hold off a Dexter, who was just one spot behind you last year? Um, it's great to be back. And um, I don't know, it seems like it's the Kai Green and Phil Yeats show, and the rest of us are just tagging along to see what happened. <laughs> I'm here for the ride. I knew what I did to make a few improvements to get back here. And I'm very excited. I think the only two guys up here haven't beaten yet is Phil and Kai. <laughs> but it's a pleasure to be a part of the Kai Green and the Phil Eat Show. <laughs> but the rookie itis is gone. He's in a second Olympia now. Rami, we've seen the pictures online at 300 plus pounds. The question is, do you have enough to move up the ranks and take out some of the champs? He wants to thank everybody that helped him, starting from Kuwait to the U.S. He's, you know, he's very thankful for all the help. Uh, uh, last year, it was his first year, and it was like a dream for him to be between all those athletes. ومن السنة اللي فاتت أخذت القرار إن أنا أكون منافس قوي أنا جاي أنافس على البطولة. And since last year he took the decision that this year he's gonna come tougher, harder, and he's competing to win. Yeah. The Dominican dominator Victor Martinez. Victor, you won the Tampa Pro just a couple of weeks ago, looking almost like the old Victor again. So now, what does it mean for you to be back on this stage and probably feeling like the old Victor? You know, the old Victor, um, I don't have to say I'm close to it. It's, it's tough because of my injuries, you know, again, but uh, I never let that be an excuse for me, you know, and um, I look forward to it. Um, just like Dexter said, I've beaten most of the guys here, except for big ass Rami. <laughs> <laughs> Not to belittle anyone, that's just to say that, you know, when, when I wasn't injured, when I was good, I was very grateful and I battled like a beast and came back, reached down deep down inside and I pulled it back up because quitting is not in me. And I just hope everybody that saw me going through everything I went to, I hope that inspired you to know that quitting is not, you know, an option. And I look forward to this weekend to bring the best that I bought, and that's beating me last year. And that's what I will do this weekend. All right, Branch Warren, you said, I will not point my way to the Olympia. If I don't win and earn my way there, I will absolutely not be on the Olympia stage. Well, you got that victory, you earned your way back. Branch, congratulations. And um, give me your feeling on this year's Olympia, man. You, you did get your way here by win. You're back in the mix. You know, sometimes you gotta work just a little harder. You think you put 100% in, you think you're doing enough, and you gotta find extra 10% to put in. And that's what I had to do this year. You know, I had a bad show in here last year, was very disappointed, and the early shows didn't go how I wanted, so uh, I reached down deep inside myself, and um, I don't know quit. You know, I've had so many things after my career, injuries, setbacks, this and that, and um, I keep my faith in the Lord, and he gives me the strength to persevere, and I'll find a way to overcome. And uh, so I'm here. Steve Kukul. Steve, right, Steve Kukul has brought the best Steve Kukul to this stage that we'll ever be, you know, seen to this day. And uh, that's it's a perfect day to do it. This mm -hmm. stage. Yeah, yeah. It's an honor to be uh, part of this. And every man on this stage, like Branch said, has a, the right to be here. Has worked their butt off for you know year round. And um, I know everybody's going to bring their best package. So it's it's you know it's not a Phil. It's not a Kai show. It's a 17 man show. And I know uh, come tomorrow night, it's going to be a battle. So don't expect this to be a walk in the park. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Ruley Winkler, really, for those who have followed you. 
For those that have followed you throughout the year, really, you had a hell of a year yourself. Uh, for those that don't know, really, it was in a motorcycle accident and a pretty bad one earlier in the season. Uh, it was speculation up in here that, that he actually might have ended his career. He might have been done. And nobody expected really to get back in contention, let alone begin on the Olympia stage. So really, congratulations to you for overcoming injuries and, and adversity, and you're back on the Olympia stage. Yeah, I'm always saying never give up, keep your head up. And it's not an excuse to be in the gym. Really, um, give me your feelings. I mean, you, you got into that motorcycle accident, you were laid up, you had a gash in your leg uh, from some of the metal out of that and then some various other injuries. I mean, it looked pretty bad. Did, what did you think about your career at that time? Did you think you were done? Um, first of all, I was thinking I was done, yeah, but um, after a while, man, I want to hear that. I want to be back on stage. And Last year was a good year for me, and I want to make this year the same. Awesome guys out of New York. John, this is your first Olympia. You're getting your feet wet this year. How do you feel about this? Uh, well, it's an honor to be here. Um, I'm kind of still like starstruck being here. It's a uh, dream come true for me. Thank you all for coming out and supporting us all. Uh, the 50th anniversary of the Olympia. Um, I don't know, I'm just living the dream, man. I'm, I'm enjoying being here and trying to take everything in. Looking at a guy that's been beating you a couple of times this year, your buddy, Juan Morel, over there. Yeah. Toronto champ. Juan, what do you think? You come here and you hear all this trash talking going on? You scared of anybody out here? <laughs> you say nothing yet. Thanks, everybody, for being here and supporting us. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I mean, it's an honor. I'm really excited and very emotional and just, words can express how happy I am to be here. I mean, this is something that I really, really just only dreamt about. Never really thought I'd be on this stage and I'm here today. You qualified last year too. 2012. Or 2012, but you chose not to do it. What made you do it this time? Do you think you well, you're not ready back in 2012, and you feel you're ready now? Um, 2012, I was like 20 pounds lighter, so I didn't feel like I'll be a contender to just be on the stage in general. Now I feel like I have a shot to, you know, just be able to stand on stage, you know, and compete and be my best. Jojo, uh, throughout the year, we've seen you compete. We've seen you compete the last two or three years as a professional. Always had the tools, always had the physique, the shape, the size, the structure, conditioning, always the Achilles heel, but you finally brought that together this year. I saw you. You know, we had, had a great season. I put in work and um, I, you know, I had three strong showings and Sean Ray actually asked me after my last show, if you qualify for the Olympia, are you gonna do it? And you know, there's no way I would miss um, this kind of an event, the 50th anniversary. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it, 100. percent Thank you, Jojo. Ibrahim Fahim won the amateur Olympia, qualified for the Mr. Olympia. What I'd like to know, what everybody wants to know, is what does it feel like winning the amateur Olympia and now being on the biggest stage in the world, competing with the best bodybuilders in the world. Let's go out on the most high level. He's saying that it's uh, his first, it's his Olympia debut this year, and uh, he's honored to compete against the elite bodybuilding coming from different countries around the globe, and he would love to make the fans from Egypt and the Gulf area happy. He also mentioned that uh, it is the 50th Mr. Olympia event, but for the Egyptians, 30 years ago, Mohamed Mikhail scored the highest score for Egypt behind Liheni, scoring second place and he's simply aiming to break this benchmark very soon. But William Bonac did exceptional this year, taking out some guys that had a whole lot of pounds of muscle on them. Yeah, that's the real giant killer right here. William, first Olympia. Yeah, I feel uh, blessed to be here. First of all, I want to thank my sponsors. 
because it's because of them that I could compete and qualify for the Olympia. So for my sponsors, thank you very much to make this possible for me. And for me, it's a, it's a dream come true, standing here with the best athletes of the world, and uh, I feel very hard to be here. You first served real notice in Australia, placing second to uh, Sean Roden. Now, a lot of people said you were actually almost good enough to beat Sean that day. Now, Sean is the top four in the world. Now, where do you see yourself Friday? Um, I feel I feel a lot of that people say that, but uh, you don't have to be nice. You don't no, have to be no, nice I, I at all. I don't want to be nice at all. I'm just being honest. You know, it's what I see and how I think. So. For me to be honest with you, I didn't think that I won from Sean, you know, so I could have been from him that day. So for me, uh, I don't, I hope, I hope to do my best here, but you know, these, these guys are the toppers, you know, so for me, just to be here is an honor for me. So the placing does it better for me. It's still good to see you here at some rubies. I have respect for all the guys. All right, we saved the last. But the best entertainer, of course, that's going to go to Fred Biggie Smalls. Freddie, you, your name has been brought up with the greats of the great when it comes to posing and display of the physique. What can we expect from Biggie Smalls this year? But Phil, I, I got to ask, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. People keep talking to trash talk. Is it trash talk when you're throwing facts out there? You said he hasn't gotten the point off of you in four years. You're, he's 0-3, you know, and all this stuff. Is that trash talk or is that just speaking the truth? How do you find? <laughs> yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, facts are the facts. And, um, you know, I like to speak truth. And the truth is, is that I've won the last three years. And the last time I did lose to Kai Green was at the March 2010 Arnold Classic. Yeah. And I worked really hard to try to make sure that would never happen again. Because I felt that that was a very close contest. Now, let's get something clear. I respect every athlete up here. Every, each and every one of them have earned the right to stand up on this podium, to stand up on that Olympia stage time and time again. I even respect their fans because, I mean, they are the ones that support these athletes to do their very, very best. But when asked, and you can give yourself a round of applause because I understand one major thing, that everybody is a fan of bodybuilding that's in here. You know, each and every one of you guys is a fan of bodybuilding. You may not be a Philadelphia fan, you may not be a Kyrie fan, or whatever it may be. It's, you're a bodybuilding fan, and that's what means a lot to me and all these athletes up here. Because when we're training for the Olympia, and we're searching you know, for a little added motivation, when we are able to check on our social feeds and, and emails and what have you, and understand that, wow, I really having a bad day, and I know that these guys are having probably the best day. How am I going to, you know, overcome obstacles? And it's because of you guys' energy, your positive feedback, you know, makes us go that extra step, makes us more accountable for our actions. Um, so obviously, with me, I mean, I would be stupid to think that I would sacrifice what I do every year to come up and say I'm going to lose. That's just stupid. That doesn't make any sense. You know, I give everything I got every year, just like these guys do. You know, when you're the other dog, you can say, I want to kick the guy's ass, I want to take nobody's crap, and I'm going to beat this guy, and everybody cheers. But when you're the champion, and you say the same thing, because you want it more than anything, he looks down upon. But I'm here to tell you, I believe in myself, I believe in, you know, my, my sponsors, my family, my friends, and my fans. You know, I give them all the respect in the world. You know, I, I do my very best, my best will always be good enough, and I've proven it. It's not just talk when you go to your house and you have sandals in your house. It's, it's a fact. But, with that said, I mean, like people said, today is a new day. Tomorrow is a new day. And it's, it's going to be beautiful. The future is upon us. <laughs> the past is over. You know, Ladies and gentlemen, Kaiser, Kaiser Davis. <laughs> you know, but overall, you know, overall, I'm very, very excited. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm dedicating this uh, Olympia win to my late father, Don Heath, who passed away in March. Um, you know, I, I made sure that uh, throughout his struggle with amyloidosis that I was able to, you know, see him in the city of Seattle, Washington, where I grew up. 
and um, mend those ties that were once broken back in the day and, and to look him in the eye and tell him that I will always, always represent my last name the best way I can for you and to look on my le legacy as a great person, not just a great athlete. You know, I respect each and every one of these guys and I expect their best, just like how they expect mine. But I told my father before he passed that, you know, I'm gonna bring one home for him and that's what I intend to do. I'd be foolish to come up here, like I said before. To that's what the first three should have been. That's what the first three should have been. I respect your father. I respect anyone that has had a father. I didn't have one. Didn't you know what? You know what? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This whole enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You know what? You talk about the past. Your whole entire career is about making excuses, talking about you're the only, you think you're the only person that's make ever excuses. gone through something in your make life. excuses. Everybody knows making your excuses. Story. Yes. Making excuses. Yes. yes. You know hey, nothing hey, of what you're talking about. You know nothing of what you're talking about. You know nothing of what you're talking about. You know nothing about me, Kai. And that's your problem. You know, that's, that's my me. problem? Yes. I have no problem with yeah. that. Knowing everything about you. I'm here to know class. everything about you. This is the type of I'm class here to that we have. I agree with you. I'm here to be here to talk about that. This is not about not about not I was it's not about not respecting the champion. Listen, man, 2013 was 2013. 2014, every man came here to do their best that's to win. Right. Now, if, that, if you want to, if you want to rest on your laurels for the past, and you want everybody to hold hands and sing Negro spirituals with you, you for the past. You know, I was asked to speak about the fact. That's it. That's it. That's it, guys. I was speaking the truth. And if the truth hurts, I mean, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, well, you know what, Phil? Let's go. Hold on. It's just unfortunate, guys. It's just unfortunate. You know, because I have been busting my ass, just like everybody else in here. I'm not making excuses. I was asked a question, and I was answering it. You by no means have the right to interrupt me while I'm talking about my father. Period. I understand. I understand this is a competition, and I understand this is not about your father. This was not about Kai Greene really not respecting your father. Just like when Kai Greene signed the poster yesterday, it was not about not respecting you. You were the champion of 2013, not 2014. And any man that came here with the opportunity to expect to do their best to win, has no right to go ahead and advance himself and do that. This guy is an interruption when you're actually trying to talk. Phil, just kick all his assets and have the other. There you go. <laughs> So let's do it, Phil. Keep my assets then. I'm here. Talk is cheap. Tomorrow. Phil wants to talk about the facts. Give me three facts as to why your physique will beat Phil Heath on that stage Saturday night. Three facts. That's one. You're scaring me. I respect you. Hang on, let him answer. I respect you. But I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for you. Give everyone came here. Back. Everyone came here with the expectation to do their best. And if we don't hold hands with you, oh, and our heart not ready to turn around and respect you because you won 2014, suddenly we're being disrespectful. That's not true. 2014 is 2014. 2013 is the past. I am not wrong, just like any of the other athletes here that have come with the expectation. Were you wrong by writing that last year? Yes or no? What do you mean? Yeah, that? Were you wrong by writing that last year? Yes, absolutely sir. not. Yeah. See? Absolutely not. See, guys? Absolutely not. I'm a champion. Absolutely not. I'm a champion. Not. Hey, how about this? How about this, guy? How about this? Just pose down now. No. 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 Well, wishful thinking. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that um, the fact of the matter is, you had the past. It's done. It's done. All right, let's get let's get past the past. Let's get past the past. And the past is in the record books already, and that's good. But we're moving forward.
guy, I'm looking for some facts here. He wants to talk facts. Trash is done. We're not going to talk trash. We're going to talk facts. facts. Give me three facts as to why you will can't do it. Will he he on can't Saturday do it. night. You just gave him a chance and he started wow. rambling on. You can't do you interrupting again. <laughs> Give me three. Here we go. Fact one. Well, I weigh about 40 pounds. Fact two. Move you out. Fact three. It's all over from the rear. And that's just it. That's how it's going to be. How about that? Is that three, Phil? Don't even ask for that. There's three facts, Phil. How about that? Now, I'm no mathematician, but if you're outweighing Phil by 40 pounds, does that put you in a 285 range? How, how's that feel, though, Phil? Did you, did you hear it? Back. Are you thinking about it? Is it marinating in there somewhere? You understand what that means? What, what, oh, I, no. If you want to talk about education, I definitely know what things mean. But uh, Phil, give me three facts as to why Kai can't beat you on stage. 2011, 2012, 2012. And folks, that's gonna wrap things up right here for Dennis the Menace James. I'm Bob Jake Roll. Thanks for coming out and seeing you guys tonight. See you tonight.
in numerical order, please. Your first finalist, Branch Warren. Victor Martinez. Sean Robin. Steve Kuklo. Dexter Jackson. Big Rami. Juan Morel. Dennis Wolf.
special celebration video, I direct your attention to the big screen, please. $16,000 to our 10th place finisher, Juan Diesel Morel. The 9th place award, the check for $19,000 to our 9th place finisher, King State Steve Kukla. She will take the 8th place award, the check for $20,000 to our 8th place finisher, the Dominican Dominator, Victor Martinez. She will take the 7th place award, the check for $25,000 to our 7th place finisher, Big Robbie. Please take the sixth place award, the check for $35,000 to our sixth place finisher, Branch Warren. Please take the fifth place award, the check for $45,000 to our fifth place finisher, The Blade Dexter Jackson.
center, please. Runner up will receive the check for $130,000, the Olympia silver medal. Presenting the first place award. That is being held by Jim Mannion and it is a special edition 18 karat gold sandal statue. They will take those awards. A check for $275,000. They will take all that in the title of 2014 Mr. Olympia. And we'll find out who that winner is right after these messages. <laughs> Hang on a second. Robin says there are no messages. Well, in that case, you're Mr. Olympia. What's up? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Say hi to your fans. What's going on, guys? Good to have you out again. We're at the Meet the Olympians event. This is uh, just the last you know, minute preparation stuff to get ready for the wave of people that come in, but it's awesome because uh, we get one-on-one -on -one personal with fans. It's, it's the, the real fans from all over the world that are here. So it's awesome to be part of it, man. And I thank you guys for coming out and supporting Steve Kuklo, the Olympia, the IBB, MPC, everybody. This is incredible. So let's get ready to knock this out. This is the start of the weekend. I literally said, and I just pulled them out. this guy. Hey everybody, this is Charles Dixon the Tank. I am here at Meet and Greet at Mr. Olympia, the 50th anniversary. 
and I'm ecstatic to be here. I've been here since 2009. I'm ecstatic. Looking forward to a good show. Um, and looking forward to meeting all the athletes, meeting all the fans. So if y'all here in Vegas, come out and check out all the um, athletes out. And come out and enjoy the show this weekend. I'll talk to you soon. So you're going to bring it this weekend or what? Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, of course. Of course. Right. I ain't going to show y'all what's underneath here yet. <laughs> but I promise you, what's underneath here is going to be very, very good. So I'm looking forward to a good show. It's going to be a good 212 showdown. So I'm looking forward to doing battle with all the good athletes here. And we'll see how everything turns out this weekend. So, so uh, um, a good army never reveals its weapons, huh? especially its tanks. Not yet. Not the tank. <laughs> the tank. <laughs> not the tank. The tank can't reveal it until war time. So it's time to go do battle. I show time to do battle. And then the tank will reveal everything. <laughs> Got it. So you have to show that again. That's awesome. Where is one? What's up, everybody? Ah, we're going to be having the best Olympia ever. Wait till you guys see it. All great champion, but of course, one of them is going to win. And you know who. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look. What's up? What's up? Now it's a party. And we got the Now it's a party t shirts. Yeah, I'm happy. She showed us some of those. smiling. How you one feeling? day out, I feel great. So you can see I'm in shape. Basket, I'm gonna bring um, some sick conditioning. Um, so happy to be here, it's amazing. And I'm here with my beautiful wife, number one fan. Oh, I can't say that, my parents and her are my number one fan. Uh, here representing the East Coast, and uh, East Coast Mecca. And, um, hopefully, uh, well, it's going to be fun regardless. Whatever the outcome is, I'm going to have fun. And um, I want to give a shout out to Bruce. You're the man. It was so much fun working with you. I look forward to many years of working with you, brother. And thank you very much for all the support and for being just you, which is a great person. Hey, look at Mama, Daddy, smile. <laughs> B. Oh, nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Bruce, what's up, man? Bruce, what's up? What's up, Grizzly Adams? How you doing, What's up? Battle for the Olympia fans. I'm here with my awesome little kiddo for the 2014 Mr. O212, guys. I'm a rocket. You know this, man. So, <laughs> happy to be here, man. Happy to be here. Thanks, Bruce. I don't want nothing real tight on my head. If I have to battle for the Olympia, we're here in 2014. Mr. Olympia, meet and greet. Quadro, come check me out. I guess I'll eat a fire. You ready? Hey, BFO, we're here at the 2014 Olympia. 
24 hours before pre-judging for the men's open. About 36 hours before I'm on stage whooping ass. So um, buy the DVD of me training and you'll see why I ended up winning. <laughs> so, so you lived up to the bearded lady status you created last year. I did. I did. I hey. forgot that comment. That was the best. Look at this. Wait, I can't see it was a big arm. In the oh my god. The bearded lady of Boston. And we got my logo on the back. Oh, what's that right there? Isn't that what is nice? that? Well, it is a nice shirt. I want that. Is that a Battle for the Olympia DVD? That's a large. That's all about.
Christ.